It's Saturday here in London, England, well known as a popular tourist destination. This weekend, it becomes a fitness destination as we get set for day two of competition here at the CrossFit Strength and Depth presented by Rogue. Thanks for joining us, everyone, inside the Excel London Arena. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson. And Mads, taking a look at the programming slate today and some big picture storylines, starting with the teams, what catches your eye? Well, the worm. We're going to see the worm on the floor. It's an implement that's gotten, it's been a challenge to teams and it's gotten some teams in trouble. So I think we're going to see some shuffling on the leaderboard as a consequence. And on the individual side, Saturday's normally known as moving day, but maybe for different reasons this year. Well, it, it typically, it used to be that there were three scored events, so a lot more points on the board, which meant that people could really kind of move around the leaderboard. Now we've only got two, but it's still moving day, but it's, in a, it's more in a mental sp space where People need to kind of, or the athletes need to kind of wrap their head around, do I need to move? Do I need to really make a push? Because this is my, then when I need to do it. Or am I happy and trying to solidify where I'm at? And one athlete who probably doesn't need to move on the men's division, your overall leader after two events, that's Willie George. Willie George had an amazing day yesterday. I thought that was perfect execution. Now, he didn't get two event wins, but that's not what perfect execution is. He stayed in his lane, kept to his pace, and look at where it ended him up. A phenomenal finish to end day number one by the Frenchman. And your overall standings after two events, Willie George is your leader, followed by a trio of games veteran. Ludwig Hansen is on the bubble in that fifth and final spot. Alex Gatoulis in a similar position for those last chance qualifier positions as well. And now taking a look at the women's division, Mads, we saw another strong finish from a, a woman we expected to do well in Emma McQuaid. Well, we were looking forward to seeing her, and I think, well, first of all, the execution was great. I think she did an amazing job, but what made me even more happy when it came to Emma McQuaid was the way that she carried herself. So relaxed, smiling at the camera, looking like she genuinely had a great time out there. And she did well with the ring muscle up, something that she has worked really hard on in the past. That moves her into first place overall as we take a look at your overall standings on the women's side after day number one as well. Similar to the men, a host of familiar names inside the top five overall. Sola Sigurdotter in fifth, holding on to that final qualification spot. And then a local athlete, Amy Kringle, is your third in final spot for the last chance qualifier. But a woman that is below the cut line, maybe in some unfamiliar territory, Mads, and Katrin David's daughter. Kathleen Davis' daughter did not have the outing that I think she wanted to have. That being said, we talked about it yesterday. If there's an athlete capable of picking themselves up and digging themselves out of that hole, it is Kathleen Tanya. And I'm sure a lot of fans of the sport will be hoping that she can make a push here on day number two. But switching over to the teams now and day one of competition, Oslo Navy Blue was perfect on day number one. Now the question is, can they run the table? I think, I think it, they presented themselves as a legit challenger to the super teams that we've been talking about before. So the Reykjavik, the Mayhems, and the other super teams out there. Is it a, is it a clean sweep? Are they presenting themselves on the board as going, we're going to go for the win? Or, we'll see. So far, so good for CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue, the runner-ups at the CrossFit Games last year. As we look at the standings for the team division after day number one and two events, Oslo Navy Blue perfect with a 200-point performance. Then a trio of Norwegian teams up there with Sandsborg and Trondheim in there. CrossFit Aylesbury, a games team from last year, there in third. And then CrossFit Mayflower holding on to that fifth and final spot. Two more events on tap for today. We're going to break out the heavy barbells, and the teams will lead things off in event number three. We're going to flip the individual order. Men will follow, followed by the women, and then we will reset for event number four. And taking a look at this first event of the day for the teams here inside the Excel London for CrossFit Strength and Depth, we've got the Team Snatch Ladder presented by the U.S. Army. Well, it is a Snatch Ladder. It is for max load. Male athletes will start at 84 kilos and make their way all the way to 124. Female athletes will go from 61 to 81 kilos. They have one minute per platform. And the weights are set in stone, except for one platform. And for more on that, we'll send it down to Biba Mastar. Yeah, I'm at the 11th platform. And um, this is where it happens, guys. So if an athlete completes the entire snatch ladder, they have one minute to rest and declare the load for this attempt right here. Um, but if both men in each pair complete the ladder, they can only send one up here to make an attempt at the 11th platform. <laughs> Some recipes for success in this event, Mads, delivered by Trifecta. Well, first of all, it is time management. It's a boring thing to address, but it is going to be so crucial on the bar. You're essentially going to have 
one lift, maybe two. If you want to make sure that you want to have two lift or you're going to have the opportunity for another lift, then you have to be really fast. Address the bar immediately. The second one is stay in the bottom until the lift, until you've got, gotten your, your balance. If you don't, then you're probably going to you're fall, you're going to fall over. We've seen that in a lot of competitions. So get a secure lift, stay in the bottom, and then get up. We're underway here in this first team heat as the male pairing from CrossFit 2605 Team Trinity Fuego. That's Daniel Jepson and Tim Mostrom leading things off Three, at the 84 kilo two, barbell. One lift. No problem for Mostrom as he power snatches that. We've seen this in the past. A couple of the early lifts are really just a warm up, maybe prime the pump a little bit. They are, and, and I think it's interesting to see. You're going to see some athletes power snatches just because they feel really comfortable and, and, and well, Three, that, as you said, it's just a warm up. You're going to see others that start squat rotating. snatching immediately just because they know they're going to be squat snatching, so why not warm up squat snatching? And up next on this first platform. Three, two. One, the male pairing lift. of Linus Polikas and Matt Rodway, CrossFit Rotherham, CFR Black. <laughs> Team Trinity Fuego on the right, Rotherham on the left. Each of these athletes will have Three, a 25 second two, window one, to get their lift in. Lift and then a 10 second transition to the next barbell. And that's what I mean, on, on, the, on the earlier lift, it really shouldn't be a problem to make it. But once you get a little bit heavier, 25 seconds is not a lot if you want to get two lifts. Definitely got to be on top of those, <laughs> those windows to make sure you're set and ready to go. Three, two, one, rotate. But it's a treacherous thing with these ladders. It's always like, ah, oh, these like, weights are so easy, it's so easy, it's so easy. And next thing you know, you're like, oh, there Three, you go. Two, one, lift. And up next, the team from CrossFit, Zug. Out of Switzerland, the male pairing of Marco Bueller and Christoph Bueller. We Three, make our way through two, the first row of barbells, lift. starting at 84 kilos. You can see on the right-hand side, Tim Mostrom from Team Trinity Fuego, already on the third bar at 93 kilos. And this is where this is where you're going to start seeing some athletes. This is where I project we're going to start seeing some athletes on the 93 kilo bar and the and the uh, the next bar as well. I think that's what the 98 kilos. I think that's where we're going to start seeing Three, athletes two, having to really one, kind of focus. Rotate. Typically up to 225 or 100 kilos, that's where people feel comfortable after that. Not quite as much. Three, Miguel Angel Gutierrez one, de Cuadra lift. entering alongside Pablo Collado, a team from Las Tablas CrossFit in TFA Caffeine is their name. <laughs> I think they might enjoy their uh, liquid stimulants there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to appreciate somebody who loves coffee. But the funny thing is, if you look at it, now the athletes are not allowed to step off of the platform, which is another reason why you want to stay in the bottom position until you secured your balance and Three, then stand up. You can't two, have one of these one, overhead sprints lift. to a finished position off of the platform. No missed lifts thus far for any of these athletes. And we see Tim Mostrom struggle at that 98 kilo bar there on the fourth weight. And so what happens is that as soon as an athlete misses their lift, one of the athletes, they need to leave the competition floor. So they're not going to be able to stay Three, um, and two, kind of help out their, one, their friends. Rotate. And it looks like that will be it for Mostrom on the snatch ladder, leaving just Three, Daniel Jepsen two, from Team Trinity one, Fuego. Lift. Making his way to the 102 kilo barbell. Speaking with Jepsen on the right-hand side of your screen in the maroon shirt. He said he was, this was the event he was most nervous for. He's been working a ton on the snatch ladder, but a little little bit of a high volatility type event where one missed lift, a little bit off here or there, and the snatch is such a fickle movement. Three, you could be two, out in a blink. One. I mean, it is, and there are so many unknowns. You've never lifted in this, in this arena before. You, it's, it's a different barbell than at home. You have the 25 second window. It's just a lot of unknowns. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's smart to be a little bit, well, this, Let's just say acutely aware that things are going to be different. Five teams on the competition floor on the left-hand side of your screen on that first platform. That is Aarhus CrossFit. 
three, two, one. The pairing of William Rosen. Hendrickson and Benjamin Peterson. Both good lifts at the opening weight. Three, two, one. That's lift. Serpenton making their way onto the floor. You might recognize Serbaton from the games last year. Fourth place team, but completely revamped roster this season. Nice lift on the left side of your screen at 177 kilos. And I, if he was hesitant about this event, I think he's he's performing very well. Three, two, one, lift. It looks like both athletes from CrossFit, Rotherham on the 102 kilo barbell. I believe that's Lannis Palikas. Good lift at 102. Three, two, one, rotate. As you see, the crew from Butcher's Lab, BL, Tobias Bird, and Mads Erding entering Three, the competition floor. Two, That's a strong one. name there. <laughs> what, wonder why it rings a bell. Uh, I don't know. There's just something about it. Daniel Jepson, the first team on the competition floor, still making his way through the ladder. That's, That's a good lift. A great save at 111. Now, what he's going to have to do, if he wants to make the next weight, he's going to have to be a little bit more patient and get that full extension because it was a great lift. He just did not come to full extension, and that made him have to rush into the bottom. And I'd be willing to bet that was maybe the weight he had circled as the make or break <laughs> for him because he seemed pretty pumped to get through that one. Yep. Good lift at 107 from Linus Palikas of CrossFit Rotherham. They've got both athletes through that 107 barbell. Three. As we see Daniel Jepson from Tr Team Trinity Fuego out of CrossFit 2605. Three, Just a little bit of patience, buddy, and you've got this one as well, and then you can celebrate. As Jepson lines up 115, that's Matt Rodway from CrossFit Rotherham at 111. Oh! That was a nice lift, too. Good attempt there, Matt. Yes. If you you missed this first attempt, what's going through your head? I mean, the thing is, he looked pretty happy at 111, so I think he, it was just this was a Hail Mary for him. Otherwise, what he should have done is just shake it out and address the bar immediately. He's only got 25 seconds, and at, at this heavier weight, he wants to make sure to sit, sit in the bottom, and that's going to cost him a bit of time because the, the lift needs to be completed at 25 seconds. It's not started at 25 seconds. A good lift just a second ago at 111 from Linus Palikas in CrossFit Rotherham, and it looks like that Three, is going to be two, it for Daniel one, Jepsen. Rotate. He finishes with a best lift of 111 kilos as both athletes from CrossFit 2605 are Three, out of the ladder two, now. All the teams from heat number one are out on the competition floor now, making their way through the ladder. That's Matt Rodway at 115 on your left. Nice. The crew from CrossFit Zug on your right at 111. I was a bit worried he took that much time for that lift. Three, two, one, lift. And that's no good for CrossFit Zug on the, your right as one of their athletes will now be exiting the ladder on the left-hand side. So far, so good for Linus Palikas as he's in at 115. Three, two, one, rotate. This is a little bit of a change-up from what you're used to seeing in the affiliate. You know, you maybe go for a heavy Three, day. You're not necessarily lifting on the minute or even with a 25 second window. You know, sometimes you'll hit an EMOM here or there, but definitely a little bit different format with your teammate. It definitely is. I, th I like that we're getting it though. I, I really like that. And I like the setup as well, whereas if you have a well-balanced, strong team, you're, you're gonna be able to make up a lot of ground. Just a few seconds he left here in this first window as Matt Rodway Three, lines up 120. Two, one, lift. Put a good attempt in, but that's going to be no good as Rodway's snatch ladder will be done. Now it's Palikas' turn. Oh, nice. 
Love the way he sits there, just waits for it. Once he gets the balance, then stands up. Three, That's nice. Two, one, rotate. Great patience at the bottom, as you mentioned, Mads, for Polikas as he makes his way to the Three, final two, one, standardized barbell in the lift as one of two athletes from CrossFit Zug are at the 120 barbell. Still a good amount of teams on the floor here making their way through this ladder. And this has typically been one of the thing where, things where you've seen European athletes, especially on the male side of the house, not necessarily being as strong. I think those days are over. Some we're, great lifts here. We are talking about that before, Matt. You know, the, the difference in a, what sort of sporting background you have growing up, whether that dictates you spend an extensive amount of time doing some weightlifting. As yep. you saw Paulikas just miss out at 124, and you can see his teammate, Matt Rodway, hoping to give him a little extra push there and get through the ladder. Three, two, one, rotate. Oh. And another valiant attempt from Linus Paulikas, but that's going to do it for the male pairing from CrossFit Rotherham as they almost get an athlete through the ladder. So now CrossFit Sug has one male athlete on the 124 kilo barbell. Their pairing of Christoph and Marco Bueller made a good dent in this ladder. They're hoping they can get at least one athlete through to the end. And that final 124. And behind them, Las Tablas CrossFit, both athletes at the 120 barbell. On your right hand side, that's Miguel de Cuadra. Oh, nice. A great lift for CrossFit Zug and oh. Las Tablas CrossFit. I believe that's Pablo Collado Three, from Las Tablas two, one, making his way off the floor. Looks like he will not advance. So now there's a one minute rest where he gets to choose what weight he wants on the bar. So it's set by it's set with 129. He's going to decide whether he wants to keep that or wants to increase the weight. And I love this. Uh, it's you kind of earn your right to call your shot. You yeah. know, you made your way through the standardized barbells. Let's see what you got now. Exactly. And I believe that's William Hendrickson from Aarhus CrossFit. Able to get two attempts in, but not quite able to keep it locked out. And that will be the end of his event. Miguel De Cuadra from Las Tablas CrossFit. Going to give his go at 124. And on the right-hand side, I believe that's Benjamin Peterson. <laughs> Solid lift at 120. Nice. And that that's is good for De Quadra. He will have another shot now as we have two athletes that have made their way through the ladder. And it looked good as well. That was nice. And he's just looking at his coach right now going, so do you want me to do 130 or what, what, are, you, what are you thinking? It should be noted that the barbell is going to be standard loaded to 129, but the athletes have their choice to give it a go. A tremendous save, and I believe looks like maybe Serbaton. Nope. Might be Serbaton motion training. I yep. think it is. Yep, it is. So 129. And he's content with clearing the standard ladder at 124. A strong performance from the team out of Switzerland. Cross the two. And obviously, you want to get a lot of weight on that last bar, yes. But the most important thing is get the team as far as you can. Get both athletes as far as you can. This is for max load. And we just saw Benjamin Peterson give a go at 124. Not quite able to lock it out. And motion. I believe that might be Andreas Kenny. I yes. could be wrong there, but that is a good lift at 124. <laughs> this is wonderful. We saw Mads Erding make a quick snatch grip deadlift pull at 120, but he will finish at 115 as his best lift. See Tobias 
Brilled. So the bar is loaded, 129 still. And that's Miguel de Cuadra from Las Tablas CrossFit. Oh. oh! Oh! And you could see the frustration on his face. That was close. It was. He. I mean, it's easy for me to sit here and say that, but I mean, all he needed was to push his head forward, kind of get balanced around that barbell, but oh, it was a great attempt. Oh, and I believe nice. that's Blade. Andrew McCoy from CrossFit Bladen. Yep. One of the final few athletes on the competition floor as we are getting ready to close out this first heat. Just a couple more barbells left. <laughs> and he's going to earn himself a shot at 124 to hopefully finish this ladder. wait for the standard one minute break. Rotate. Three, two, one, lift. Andreas Kenny from Sur CrossFit Serbaton Motion Training. You can see his teammate. Daniel Busser watching on. Oh! And Andrew McCoy from CrossFit played and put a good pull into that 124 barbell, but just not quite able to stand it up. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh. 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 So close. Oh. It looked like he had it, Mads. It did. I was so, I was so excited. Tremendous patience <laughs> at the bottom. It looked like he was able to just barely stabilize it, but sometimes you get 90% of the way home and you just can't stand it up. I mean, it's a lot of weight in a very short time as well. And 129 is always going to be 129. Oh, man, I was, so, I was so happy. That's a valiant, valiant attempt right there. I know I really appreciate it. Some strong lifting from the men oh, yeah. here in heat number one for the teams. We're going to reset for heat number two of the men, and then the women will go. So this just is your look final at lift. Oh, my gosh, from motion training. Looks for a second, but just quite unable to stabilize oh, through the shoulders so there. Close. You can see the... You saw the left knee kind of buckle a bit. He did get a great extension, as you said, a little bit soft in the shoulders. But then as soon as that left, or his right knee actually, I'm sorry, sorry, his right knee kind of buckle a little bit, that barbell is unforgiving. It's just going to pull you out of there. Oh, man. That's going to do it for heat one of the men. We're going to set re reset real quick for heat number two of the men here in team event number three.
Action continues here on day number two at Strength and Depth. Welcome back inside the Excel London. Tommy Marquez here alongside Mads Jacobson. The mass daughter will be joining us in just a moment. Continuing coverage of team event number three. And Mads, it's going to be a snatch ladder. It is. So the male weight starts at 84 kilos, then they make their way all the way up to 124. If they clean that or they clear that, then they're going to be allowed onto the 11th platform. And they have one minute per platform. This event brought to you by the U.S. Army. And speaking of that 11th platform, we're going to send it down to Biva Mass Daughter for more. I'm at the 11th platform, and um, this is where everything happens. So if an athlete completes the entire snatch ladder, he gets to come up here, have one minute to declare uh, the load, and then uh, can make an, an, an attempt here at the 11th platform. But only one from each team or like one man can come up here and make an attempt. So if both men on each team um, finish the ladder, they have to choose one. There can only be one Mads. With that in mind, your recipes for success delivered by Trifecta. Well, the first one is time management. We saw it in the, in the previous heat as well. You've only got 25 seconds to lift for each athlete. There is a 10 second transition period. So if you want to, or if you start getting challenged by weight, you want to address the bar immediately. So you've got another shot. The last one is stay at the bottom until you have the lift. First of all, it's a very small platform. You're not allowed to step off of the platform. So make sure that you stay in the bottom until you make that lift. You do not want to start running with it. This is your start list for heat two. The male pairings will be entering the floor, starting with lane number one, CrossFit with them. They'll be the first pair to enter. And then as they rotate through the ladder, one by one, the remaining teams will follow in as we see the male pairing from with them, Sam Long and Patrick Ford. Three, Looks like two, Sam Long will be first one. to lift. Both Sam and Patrick, former rugby players. Asked Sam before the competition how he found CrossFit. He said back in 2014, a friend sent him a video of Rich Froning and said, hey, buddy, I think you might be good at this. And <laughs> eight years later, here we are on the semifinal competition floor. I love that. You may be good at this. Yes. Love It's a rugby attitude. I oh, can yeah. do it. Two, one, lift. As Patrick Ford lines up his first lift at 84 kilos. He said he switched to CrossFit after a few injuries in rugby and started to use the training to uh, get himself back in shape and healthy. Pretty common occurrence you hear from the sporting world. <laughs> yeah. But it is a bit of paradigm shift because we're seeing a lot of the young athletes have no previous sports Three, that they've kind of been two, indulging before one, they do this. They rotate. grew up with CrossFit. Here is the male pairing from CrossFit Katla, Magnus Sigurdsson and Victor Olafsson. Two, one, lift. Making their way into the ladder, Victor will be up first. I've got to say, I, I like seeing athletes. I know that some athletes prefer to power snatch the first weight just because they feel that they're so easy. But I like to see them use these first lifts to just get a full range of motion because you're probably going to need it once you get to the 120, 125, uh, 124. Three, Not two, a lot of people are going to power snatch that. Lift. Almost kind of priming the pump, if you will. Exactly. It looks like Magnus Sigurdsson just had that barbell go out the back a little bit, but manages to stand it up and save it. Good at 84 kilos. Three, and that's what we're talking two, about. You've only got 25 one, seconds, so if you want, rotate. if you need another attempt, you need to have addressed that bar immediately. And the crew from CrossFit 8020 entering the four. Three, Louis two, Pearson and Jim Neal. That's a strong beard. Strong beard. I think it adds 10 pounds to your lift. It definitely does. Each athlete will have a 25 Three, second window two, for which one, to make their attempts. Lift. After each athlete has their window, there will be a 10 second transition. And that is no good for Magnus Sigurdsson. As you mentioned, Mads, they cannot exit the platform, otherwise it will be a no rep. Oh, nice. And just like the previous barbell, no good on the first <laughs> attempt, Three, all good two, on the second one. one. And it is, a it is a pretty small platform as well. So, I mean, you really, really want to make sure you don't start running all over. 
and the pair from North Engine CrossFit, Charlie Hodge and Nestori Newton, entering the floor. Still beautiful lifting here from Widom. Right in front of your screen. Shaky there, but manages to stabilize it. As you see, three, two, Louis one, and Jim Neal both making their way to the 93 kilo barbell. Special shout out to Jim Neal who will be lifting first. Three, Him and his wife are expecting two, their first one, child on August 1st. Congratulations, brother. As he writes it out, just in time to fly out to the games if need be. So. Growing their family in conjunction with this CrossFit game season as Jim gets a good lift in at 93 kilos. Three, so right, two, side, right side of your screen is, is Widom at 102 kilos. And their lifts have been really, really nice up until this point. And they still are. God, I love the way you stay in the bottom, brother. That is exactly what we're talking about. And that's a good lift at 102 from Patrick Ford. Three, so you see the, two, one, that is not four, Nordic Original in your screen right now, but I believe that's the crew from CrossFit Mayflower. I think it is. Stefan Little and Benjamin Wadham. Yeah. Oh, look again, right side of your screen. So that's CrossFit Widom. It is so fast under the bar. I like it. And that's a good lift at 107 from Sam Long of CrossFit Widom. And you can see his teammate Patrick Ford just <laughs> nodded. Oh, yeah, brother, you got that. <laughs> Three, two, this, this format's pretty fun. You know, you know, you're lifting on a timer, but you kind of get into a groove there. You can see some of the athletes vibing and really kind of oh, celebrating the format. And that's no good on your left-hand side of your screen from Mag Magnus Sigurdsson. Three, two, one, if you're going to miss it, miss it behind you, not in front of you. That was a pretty good attempt. So CrossFit Widom have, has one athlete progress to the next bar. And that's a good attempt from Patrick Ford, but just unable to lock it down. And CrossFit Trondheim entering the floor now. <laughs> Quick little power snatch at 84 kilos. <laughs> Somebody's comfortable with a barbell, I'd say. The pairing of Lars Rudy and Eric Vadal. And I believe that is going to do it for Sam Long and CrossFit with him. His best lift at 111. As you see, Louis Pearson good at 102. The crew from CrossFit Aylesbury. Yep. Team three, two, tap. One, Michael Castris and Jamie Lowry making their way onto the competition floor. <laughs> Mike Catherine, it's just a stud, just looking so comfortable out there. So like, yeah, I'm going to throw a heavy barbell around, but guess what? That's what I do. Oh, yeah, he is. He is a powerful athlete, former professional rugby union player in Wales. Also competed in boxing growing up. <laughs> looking to throw a few punches here on the snatch ladder. He's such a nice guy. I was talking to him this morning, and he's like, no, I feel very comfortable about this. I'm like, yeah, you wonder why. <laughs> As we see Michael Catris warming up with that 84-kilo barbell. He, the athlete program and their team, frequenters of the sanctional circuit, last year was their first time qualifying for the games, but before that, three sanctional events, three, three podiums for them. Two, one. 
So I think that's CrossFit Catla now making it onto the 115 kilo barbell. Victor Olofsson Three, hoping to be the first two, athlete in this second one, heat to make it past lit. 115. On the right hand side of your screen, both teammates from CrossFit 8020 on the 111 barbell. A good nice. lift from Olofsson at 115 on your left. Jim Neal from 8020, good at 111. You see Louis Pearson from 8020 lining up at 111 as well. National champion in hurdles. Oh. As a youth athlete. And then played rugby for six years. And this is huge for them because get, get having both athletes get as far as you possibly can allows them to accumulate as much weight as possible. This is great. Three, and there is the pairing from your overall leaders, CrossFit Oslo, Navy Blue, Nikolai Biladel, and Elvin Dollarengard. And Victor Olofsson, second to last barbell in this ladder. That's good at 120. Nice. Jim Neal is in at 115. So now we're starting to see a few athletes here make their way through the back half of this ladder. Nice. Good lift from Louis Pearson at 115 and 8020 now. It's pretty fire. Situating themselves it. nicely with both athletes making it to 120. Three, two. Katla onto the 124 kilo barbell. And this would be huge for Victor Olofsson. Remember, his teammate Magnus Sigurdsson Three, went out a little bit two, earlier in one, the ladder, yeah. so trying to offset that lift here with a strong one of his own. Oh. Just not able to get under it for Victor Olofsson out of CrossFit Catla on your left. It's going to be tight for time now. Three, two, yeah, no, that's. Unfortunately, that's no good for Victor Olofsson as he exits the ladder at the 124 barbell. His best lift was at 120. We just saw a second ago Jim Neal unable to lock out 120 for CrossFit 8020. Yes. <laughs> that's good for Louis Pretty Pearson. Fired up. That earns himself a well deserved bro hug. Oh, definitely. <laughs> He's worth it. High fives, chest bumps. And Louis Pearson will get himself a chance at clearing this ladder. Top of your screen, I love the love Louis Pearson's pacing back and forth. He's looking at the barbell like it's personal. You see the crew from CrossFit Throndheim Three, two, making one, their crack three. at 107. 124. I believe that's Lars Rudy. And Louis Pearson now at the 124 barbell. It's not a bad attempt. Three, two, one. Rotate. Oh. A good attempt by Louis Pearson, but unable to clear the ladder. He'll finish <laughs> with the best lift Three, at 120. Two, Still look Strong pretty performance happy, from both him and Jim Neal out of CrossFit 8020. Alexander Elebru at 120 for CrossFit Nordic Originals. And you can see behind him Eric Rubio also at the 120 barbell. So this would be a strong performance from Nordic Original, a team that came in on the bubble in sixth. Three, They're going to need some good some four, some good outings today. So yeah, this is important. That's Nordic Original on your left. Eric Rubio good at 120. <laughs> oh, nice. CrossFit Mayflower. A funny little detail about Eric Rubio is that, so this is his second competition ever. Wow. 
Yeah, what a way, what a way <laughs> to get some experience. <laughs> yeah. And that's Benjamin Wadham from CrossFit Mayflower. Not quite able to get a lift in at 115. That's going to do it for both of Mayflower's athletes. It's so 124 on the barbell, Alexander Lebru. Like it's nobody's business. There you go. Good at 124 for CrossFit Nordic Original and Alexander Lebru. First athlete from this second heat to clear the ladder. Now will be Eric Rubio's turn. Yes, sit, stay, yes. Brilliant. So this young man two weeks ago had no idea that he was going to be competing, and there he is with 124. That's nice. Just casually stepping in, <laughs> filling in to clear the snatch ladder. And he may not be experienced in live competition, but he looks perfectly comfortable comfortable under that 124 barbell. Well, if you're going to compete, do it with somebody like Alexander Elebru, who's been to the games as a team's athlete before. He's been a part of the CrossFit community for God knows how long. I mean, that's where you want to start. And this is CrossFit Throndheim, and I believe Eric Vodal. Oh, nice. Those fast, fast turnarounds, great speed through the middle. Just keeps on going. And that's good at 120, and he'll have a shot at finishing this ladder. You see in the back right of your screen, Jamie Lowry from CrossFit Aylesbury, good at 115. Mike Catris, good at 115. Yep. Gives a quick look to his crowd. <laughs> Are you not entertained? And, and it looks like Alexander Lebreu from Nordic Original will keep 129 on the bar. And potentially be the first athlete to hit a weight at this 11th platform. Three, two, one, lift. Yes! No problem from Alexander Elibru, and he becomes the first athlete to get in a lift at that 11th platform, good at 129, and a huge boost for Nordic Original. Oh, man, this just made my day. So happy for him. I, they needed this outing. Oh. One more lift, Mike. You got it. There's just a few seconds off from the clock on the floor to on the screen. So yes, 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 yes. Lift. Will no. He's un he's wondering what. Three, two, one, lift. So he got a no rep. I'm not quite sure what's going on. And it looks like there was confusion from the judge around whether or not the lift would count. As we see Aylesbury now, Jamie Lowry lining up 124. Yes, yes, yes. He's got it. Yes! Oh, that's nice. And that's good at 124 for Jamie Lowry. And it looks like they've made the correction, and Catris will be able to continue at that 124. Oh, no, go, come on, Mike. Come on, come on, come on. And you can see the look on his face. He, he knew he had that for a second, maybe rushed out of the bottom there, but a good attempt from Mike Catris and the crew from CrossFit Aylesbury as they will send Jamie Lowry to the 11th platform. And here we have CrossFit Throndheim and Eric Vodal at 125. Oh, beautiful. And that lift is good. Oh. You know what makes me happy is both that they got all the way, but just the way he lifted that. It was a beautiful lift. And it doesn't matter how much he went up, he got that lift in, gave them a little bit of a boost there, and the crew from Tron Diamond <laughs> happy to celebrate their athlete making it through. And now the team from Oslo Navy Blue. Just casually throwing some barbells around. 
Elvin Dalringard, good at 120. They're going to send both athletes to the 124 barbell. Three, two, one, lift. And here we go, Nicolai Belodol, 124. Oh, good pull from Nikolai. Oh, he's got another one, please. Yes. No. Three, two, one, lift. It's a so good attempt Elvin. from Nikolai Bilodel, but now Elvin's turn. Yes! A little shaky in the receiving position, but still able to stand it up. That is good at 124 for Elvin Dalringard as Oslo Navy Blue will send one athlete Three, to the final two, platform. One, There's so much power in that man. Let's see what kind of weight he wants. Three, two, one, lift. Looks like he's asked for 130. One thirty, and that will be a one kilo advantage over Nordic if he hits Three, this for the top lift. Two, one, lift. Oh, go get it, brother! Get it! Yes! Go, go, go! Yes! Oh, oh it's so no. close! Oh. For Dalringard, it looked like he had it at three thought, different times in that lift. Yes. I mean, he does look pretty comfortable anyways. Like, yeah, I know. I, but, oh, I thought he had that in the bank. I really wanted to see it. Let's see what's going on. And he put a good pull into it. Looked like he might stand it up. Oh, man. Oh, and you could. We've all been there, right? Oh, You're absolutely. You're 90% of the way through that lift, and just one little thing comes off, and that bar comes crashing down. He ends up a little bit lower than I think he wanted to in that receiving position, and once he started driving, he was just driving him more off of his strong leg. But, I mean, it's... Oh, I wanted to see him do that. Okay. But the heaviest lift belongs to CrossFit Nordic Original. And Alexander Elebru. Eric, Rub Eric Ruby looks pretty happy as well. There was really no question there on that 129. That looked just like his opening <laughs> lift at 84 kilos. It's just great technique, a lot of experience, feeling comfortable under, under the pressure as well, and having, having a game plan, having a, being able to kind of test this, this event prior to walking in here. I think that probably did a lot of good for him. Crowd starting to file in here on a sold out Saturday. Day number two at CrossFit Strength and Depth. We also have a community event going on. So we got athletes and fans pouring in between two different competition floors. Yeah. And the top lift was from Nordic Original, and Bibba Mastodder is standing by with their male pair. So guys, um, event win number one in the books. Nice, yes. <laughs> so um, how was it standing on the 11th platform? I mean, I have always been liking like the heavy snatches. So for me, it was most about like getting into it and get a good feeling. Uh, I would say I'm more impressed about Eric. He hit a new PR, came into the competition with like two weeks preparation and hit amazing numbers. So as a team, we're super happy. Congratulations with the PR. Yeah. Um, the next workout is uh, very much of like synchro movements. How have you guys been preparing, especially you? You're new to the team. In, uh, two weeks of prep, we've been uh, working uh, as hard as we can. To, I mean, just using every little time that we have. So hopefully it'll go good. I'm uh, pretty confident. How was it to uh, watch him on the 11th platform? To watch Alex. I mean, uh, Alex is my... My lover, no. <laughs> no it, was, it, was, uh, it was pretty good. He was, he was really good. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.
A little bit of Swedish humor there. Alex the is my lover. I think <laughs> Alex, girl, Alex girlfriend, who's currently cruising around with their newborn daughter, is going to have questions about this. That's going to do it for the male pairings. The female pairings are up next as we continue team event number three. Welcome back inside the Excel London Exhibition Center here for day two in CrossFit Strength and Depth. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson, the third member of our team, bit of a mass daughter, will be joining us momentarily. The male pairings are done for the teams. Now it's the women's turn for team event three, the snatch ladder presented by the US Army. Well, the female athletes are gonna address the, this challenge. It's a 61 kilo lift to start with, ends up with an 81 kilo. Uh, on the last barbell after that, they will be allowed onto the final platform where they will be able to choose the weights themselves. Every athlete has 25 seconds to lift and there's a 20 or a 10 second transition period. Quick clarification for something we saw earlier in the men's heat. As long as you start the lift before your time expires, it will count. But your recipes for success, Mads, 
they remain delivered by trifecta. They remain the same. <laughs> Time management, there's only 25 seconds to, to lift, so you're going to have to address the bar immediately in case you should need an extra lift. Last one, stay in the bottom until you have the lift. The platform is small and you're not allowed to step off of the platform. That's the first thing. Secondly, as soon as, as, soon as you, you have balance, then you're going to be able to start lifting it. If you don't have it, that lockout is going to get you in trouble. And your start list and lane assignments for this event three for the women's pairing. That first lane, CrossFit 2605 will be the first pair to enter the ladder and one by one with each interval, the remaining teams will enter in order. As we get ready to see the women try and pick up where the men left off. And the first team that will be entering the ladder will be CrossFit 2605, Team Trinity Fuego. The female pairing of Freya Grobson and Luis Matthiasen. 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 Luis Matthiasen. Or Freya Grobson. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did that very well. i got to be honest. I, I thought Three, you did that very well. Two, one. Lit. Well, I understand her shirt. It says strength. It, it does. And she's at strength and depth. Couldn't be better. It's almost like she planned it. Opening weight at 61 kilos. And that is good for Matthiasen. That almost looked hard for her. It, and it is a hard. It's a hard to treat a light barbell at, as if it was heavy. It's always an Three, interesting strategy, two, right? You know you're going to have to pull under for a full snatch eventually. Maybe you may not want to in this first event, or this first barbell. Nice. That's a good lift from Freya. There's also the the, 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 the aspect of it, you know, they get, they're, they're put in the corral, they're sitting there waiting to get in. So you warm up and then there's a period of time and you start kind of warming down a little bit, so to speak, and Three, then two, welcome onto the floor. One, the next team to enter from CrossFit Rotherham, the pairing of Ruta Lendreitien and Georgia Davenport. Three, two, Georgia on your one, left. Lift. I believe she will be the first to lift. Nice. So much power from that Trinity Fuego. To, like, it's just, that's on the right side of your screen. Some interesting sporting backgrounds from the crew from CrossFit Rotherham. We saw Georgia Davenport good at 61 kilos. She was a professional Three, diver two, competing for one, Great Britain. Lift was a British champion, European medalist, retired and then started CrossFit. And then Ruta Landreitien, who just got, got a good lift in at 61, national champion powerlifter, record holder <laughs> in the bench press. So two very different ends of the spectrum brought together here by CrossFit competition. I love that. As we see Three, the team from two, CrossFit one, Zug and Stephanie two. Buer and Vanessa Spanier as the next to enter the ladder. Three, two, one, lift. Three teams on the competition floor making their way through these increasingly heavy barbells. Cross it to 605 at the 65 kilo barbell. It's a good lift from Matthiasen. And now the weight's starting to go up a little bit. She looks more comfortable with that weight, to be honest. Three, two, one, lift. Oh, that's nice. A good lift from Lendreitien on the left-hand side of your screen. Similar good lift from Grobson. Three, two, one, rotate. Three, and it looks two, like only one, one athlete lift. from CrossFit Zug was able to make it past that first barbell. Oh. Weren't quite able to see what happened, but she is alone on the platform. I hope we're not looking at an injury. We'll try to find out for you later at the same time as CrossFit 2605 Team Trinity Fuego, first female athlete puts away that seven or 68 kilo barbell second athlete exactly the same
They look very comfortable on the barbell. And it should be noted that uh, Ruta Landreiten, who just got the good lift at 65 kilos, the oldest female in the competitive field, individuals or teams, 42 years Three, old, didn't start two, any fitness till one, 34, so. It's, not, it's just a number. It's just a number. Exactly. The crew from Aarhus CrossFit, Frederick Peterson Three, and two, Jeanette Nielsen, one, lift. starting their journey through this snatch ladder. Oh. Go again. 70 kilos for CrossFit 2605 Team Fuego. That's better. It's interesting. It looked like the bar was more than Three, high enough. It's just two, a little bit one, of trouble in the receiving lift. position, catching it high and riding it down. Exactly. She did, she did have a little bit of trouble. She, her, she needs to put her head forward a little bit, get the barbell centered over the middle of her foot to be able to stand up. But second attempt was a lot better. So both their athletes. Oh. Obviously, Three, slightly two, upset and not one, happy with the performance, rotate. but I'm just happy she's not injured. And she's going to be able to come back again. Yeah, always tough to see that, but there will be another Three, opportunity two, to one, bounce back later lift. this afternoon as the crew from CrossFit Serbaton Mosin Training, Grace Lilly and Leah Hutchinson, making their way to the platform. And on your left, both <laughs> athletes from Team Trinity Fuego still making their way through the ladder. Similar scenario on the right-hand side with CrossFit Rotherham. About to finish up their Three, portion of the two, first half of this one, ladder. Lift. For anyone watching at home, athletes will make their way left to right, snake their way back right to left. The second portion of this ladder as we make their way to the final 81 kilo barbell. I am very happy with the lifting from, from 2605 Team uh, Trinity Fuego. Looking very, Three, very comfortable. Two, the Butcher's Lab one, BL pairing. Celia Zillo and Ray Christensen. Three, two, one, lift. So 75 kilos on the barbells on your left on the left side of your screen. Nice. Just so powerful. She, there, it's the overhead position when she lands. Just balancing that bar. Just so much power. Three, two, one, lift. <laughs> and we have yet to see an athlete from either of the first two teams onto the floor exit the ladder as we're entering the final three barbells. CrossFit Bladen, three, Yasmin Spencer, two, Hope Causer Gillis. Rotate. Spencer on your right. Hope on your left. Three, two, one, lift. So T Trinity Fuego, CrossFit 2605, onto the 77 kilo barbell. Oh, she oh. steps off the platform. And even though she was able to stabilize it, that will be a no rut. Athletes cannot leave the platform. Three, two, one, lift. There she goes. And that will count for Luis Matthiasen. Despite, so, so comfortable. And it's always nice to know that you have a strong lifter behind you, because even though Three, she went two, over a little bit on her time one, window, got the lift in still, no question for Freya Grafson. Three, two, one, lift. So you see the athlete from CrossFit Zoo cheering on her teammate, who's still making her way through the ladder. And that's exactly what you need to do. Oh, 79 kilos on that barbell on the left side of your screen. And for the last three barbells, she's missed that first attempt and been able to dial it out. You can see her set up in the back half of the platform three, now. Yeah. Almost like she knows she's going to walk <laughs> it forward. Lift. So she's out. 
didn't make that lift. On the right hand side, a good save from Ruda Lavreiten from CrossFit Rotherham. As Freya Grafson will make her second attempt at 79 Three, kilos. Two, one, rotate. And that's going to oh. do it for the crew from CrossFit 2605, Team Trinity Fuego. Three, a good two, showing from their one, female pairing. Lift. And so the Rotherham, the team from Cross, CrossFit Rotherham CFR Black, both athletes still on the floor. Good lift at 79. That's Georgia Davenport. And that's huge. As long as you can keep the entire team on the floor, that is huge. Three, two, one, lift. On the right hand side of your screen, that is the crew from Las Tablas CrossFit, TFA Caffeine, the pair of Lola Guillen and Natalia Paz. As Ruta Landreiten makes her way through 79 kilos, and it looks Three, like they will have both two, athletes at that one, final barbell. Rotate. Both of them looking very comfortable with it as well. Three, two, one, lift. There you go, 81 kilos. No problem. Right side of your screen, that's from the Las Tablas team. And that is a tremendous lift. Three, from Natalia Paz. Two, one, lift. Left side of your screen, we're coming back to Rotherham again. Nice, and so both of them clear that way. Ruta Landreitian going to make it two for two from Rotherham, clearing the ladder here for this female pairing, as Lola Guillen from Las Tablas CrossFit. Not quite able to Three, lock two, it out overhead. <laughs> Doesn't look pretty happy, though. She will exit the ladder with a good lift at 77 kilos. As Three, you see, Grace Lilly two, from one, CrossFit Serbaton Motion Training lining up 75 kilos. Now the, the decision will be who gets to lift? Who gets the crack at the 11th platform? Nice! <laughs> I think we may have just seen another personal best right here. And another Three, excellent two, show of patience one, from Natalia Paz yeah. out of Las Tablas CrossFit. A year ago, she ruptured a collateral ligament in her elbow. And as she was trying to recover, her main goal was trying to strengthen the other areas of her fitness as much as possible, and trying to get her form on lock for events just like this. And clearly that time was time well spent. Three. It's not always, I mean, it's always bad to get injured, absolutely. But being able to kind of focus on some of the things that, that you've been working around and not addressing, it's always a good thing. So we've got 86 Three, kilos on the, two, on the 11th one, barbell right here. Lift. Not in the middle of your screen. The middle of your screen is the last 81 kilo attempt here. 86 kilos like it's nobody's business. And Georgia Davenport the first athlete to make it to the 11th platform, and the first athlete to stick her lift. At 86 Three, kilos two, was the call, and one, a wise lift. choice from Davenport, as CrossFit Rotherham will get a nice boost from their female pairing here in the snatch ladder. And yeah, that was a very good attempt. Left-hand side of your screen, that's motion training from CrossFit Serbaton. On the right-hand side, CrossFit Butcher's Lab BL, both of their athletes still making their way through the ladder. Three, two, one, rotate. And off, just off screen, Natalia Paz from Las Tablas CrossFit, unable to finish the Three, ladder, so she two, will finish just one, one barbell shy. Lift. But a tremendous performance from her. A good lift from Grace Lilly on the left hand side. And CrossFit Serbaton. I believe that was Ray Christensen. A miss at 77, but she's going to reload. Three, two, one, lift. Christensen not quite able 
to lock it out, and she will give way to Celia Zillow. Oh. <laughs> Leah Hutchinson from <laughs> CrossFit Serbaton. Just unable to stabilize and get control of that 79 kilo Three, barbell. Two, one, rotate. So both Serbaton and Butcher's Lab have one athlete left on the floor. Leah Hutchinson from Three, Motion Training two, will one, finish with a best lift, lift of 77 kilos. Ray Christensen will finish with a best lift of 75 kilos for Butcher's Lab. So 81 kilos on the bar. Nice. And that's good for Grace Lilly, <laughs> the lone returning member from CrossFit Serbaton's game qualifying team last year, the team that finished fourth overall Three, just off the podium. Two, one, she almost looked surprised. <laughs> you know, sometimes a max effort lift day in the snatch just goes that way. Yep. Eyes up. Yes. Nice. Celia Zillo able to Get a good lift in at 79 kilos, showcasing some great patience Three, at the bottom there. Two, one, rotate. And I, I really like the lift. I, I want to see her. I want to see her believe in herself just a little bit more. So when she lands Three, it, that those two, eyes need to come up just one, a little bit, so she gets lift. her chest up and then drives out of that bottom position. And so, Grace Lily will take her one minute break for the 11th platform, and two athletes lifting. Now in the ladder, as we see Celia Zillow awaiting the final barbell for Butcher's Lab. And then they're just on the right-hand side Three, of your screen, two, the long sleeve, one, top and black bottoms. That's Yasmin Spencer from CrossFit Blade, and she already has a good lift in at 79 kilos, so she will have a crack at finishing this ladder as well. Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. Oh. And Celia Zillow unable to get a lift in there, and she will finish with a top lift of 79 Three, kilos as she gets two, one, a hug rotate. from her teammate, Ray Christensen. So here we go, 85 kilos on the barbell. Three, Grace Lilly two, from CrossFit Serbaton making a four kilo lift. jump on this final 11 platform. side of your screen, a good lift at 85 kilos from Grace Lilly. She is pumped. And just before that, Yasmin Spencer, a good lift at 81 as well. So another athlete clearing this ladder and a well-deserved moment of jubilation for Grace Lilly and CrossFit Servants on. You've got, you've got to love that kind of reaction as well. So it was one kilo less, but still a great effort. It was one kilo less from the CrossFit Rotherham lift, but still able to get in some added kilos on this final barbell. And you can see the excitement. I love it. One lift. Nothing better than that feeling. Jasmine Spencer, last athlete out there on the floor for CrossFit Blayton. There she is right now. And the lift that she just had at 81 kilos was very, very solid. She's looked very solid all the way. And it looks like she's put 86 kilos on the bar for her last lift. Attempting to tie the top lift from CrossFit Rotherham. Spencer found CrossFit four years Three, ago after tearing her two, ACL and one, meniscus playing lift. netball. Said CrossFit helped her build back her strength and fitness following those knee operations. Yeah. Well, she looks both strong and very fit, so I think, you know, did the right choice. And I would hope she'd know how to rehab. She is a physiotherapist. She works for the NHS, so. No surprise, she's had some good lifts Three, and good positioning two, here. One, a lot of, a lot of love for the NHS and all the work that they've been doing through this uh, last two last two years. So this would be a tie for the Rotherham lift Three, if she makes two, it. So it's 86 one, kilos. Lift. Oh, nice. No problem for Yasmin Spencer as she is perfect through the snack ladder <laughs> clears all 10 bars, slaps five kilos on the end, nails that 11th platform as well, and one, 
lift. She is greeted with some smiles and a hug from her teammate from CrossFit Bladen. And that's going to wrap up this first heat of women here in team event number three. And Mads, we saw a handful of athletes clear the ladder. Well, we did. a good lift at the final platform. Exactly, and that was a great lift. Looked super comfortable going through the entire the entire ladder. And as she got here, well, both athletes actually cleared the last bar, the last barbell. It was Georgia Davenport from CrossFit Rotherham, and then to close things out, Yasmin Spencer from CrossFit Bladen. Both of their teammates over the moon, seeing their team get a nice <laughs> boost from that extra lift. Heat one for the women pairing on this team competition is done. We're going to reset, be back in just a moment for heat two of the women on event number three.
It's a beautiful day here on Saturday at the CrossFit Strength in Depth here in London, England. Welcome back inside the Excel London Arena, home to a few cross, uh, a few Olympic events back in the day. Now host to some CrossFit. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson will be joined by Biba Mass Daughter in just a second. These are your overall standings after day number one of competition. Oslo Navy Blue, perfect on day number one followed by a handful of their fellow countrymen and women, CrossFit Sarpsport, CrossFit Trondheim, also joining them in the top five, Aylesbury Team Tap and CrossFit Mayflower, two teams from the Great Britain here as well. And team event three is the Snatch Ladder presented by US Army. It is. Male athletes are going to start at 84 kilos. They're going to make their way up to 124. Female athletes are going to start at 61, making their way up to 81 kilos. They will have one minute per platform. I think this is the team. This is for the team. So we have we have a snatch ladder. They need to make their way all the way through the snatch ladder, allowing them onto the 11th plate where they then get to choose the weight they want. And for more on that final platform, let's send it down to the floor to Biba Mass Daughter. I'm at the 11th platform, and here's where the magic happens. So if an athlete completes the whole snatch ladder, they'll come down here. Uh, and they can declare their, they can choose their weight on their own. But if both women in the pair finish the ladder, they have to choose just one to get up here on the 11 and make a perfect snatch if they can. Thank you, Biba. And for this team event three, Mads, your recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Well, it is time management. You've only got a 25 second window, so address the bar immediately should you need an extra lift. Second one, stay in the bottom until you have the lift. It's a small platform. If you step off, you won't, your rep will not be counted, but also just to make sure that you got the perfect lockout before you stand up. And here is your heat start list for the second heat of the women. CrossFit Woodham will be the first pair to enter the floor and then one by one, they'll make their way through the ladder, followed by the teams below Three, them. Three, two, one, lift. And there is the pairing of CrossFit with them. Amy May Sutton, first to lift behind her. Her teammate, Lindsay Hicks. Getting things started at that 61 kilo barbell. You see Three, Lindsay Hicks two, is going to be the second one, to lift here lift. for CrossFit Widom. Oh. And unfortunately for Hicks, that will mean Three, her event is two, done as she's one, unable to get rotate. a lift in at that first barbell. And Amy May Sutton will be the lone athlete advancing for CrossFit Winham. The team from CrossFit Katla out of Reykjavik, Iceland. Stenun Svan's daughter and Andrea Ora daughter. Good lift from Amy May Sutton on the right hand side. as Stenun Svan's daughter will be two, second to lift one, for the crop. CrossFit lift. Katla team. Oh, that's a nice lift. That's exactly the kind of lift you want to start out with. Just a solid lift, land in that barbell exactly where you want it. Gives so much confidence for the rest of that ladder. Set the tone with some good technique. Three, two, one, rotate. And up next, it'll be the pair from CrossFit 8020, Carrie Hewitt and Emma Willis. Three, two, one, lift. Amy Sutton, 65 kilos, no problem on the right side of your screen. And no problem from Andrea Oradotter on the left-hand side. Three, two, one, lift. So stay in the middle of your screen here at the second barbell, 63 kilos. 
Nice. And that's what you always love to see, Mads. The next lift on the ladder looks exactly like the one before it. Exactly. Consistency across your technique. And that will be Three, the pair from two, North Engine CrossFit. One. Rotate. Edis Rosenloff in front, Vera Koskalainen behind her. Three, two, one, lift. So Amy on the right side of your screen onto the 68 kilo barbell. Good lift, a little bit more of a struggle than we've seen her on the earlier barbells. Still opting to power snatch it. Three, two, one, lift. Yeah. Oh, staying and looking so comfortable. As we talked about sitting down in the bottom, just waiting for that bar to stabilize and then standing it up. And a sp similar story from the team in the back north engine. And here's your crew from CrossFit 8020, Three, Emma Willis two, and Carrie Hewitt. One, little shout out to Carrie Rosie. Hewitt. She's a, a doctor, and this last year, she was given the title of fittest doctor on earth in the occupational games. Three, Impressive two, that she's able to compete one, and still maintain lift. a full shift rotation as a doctor in Northern Ireland. Amazing what these athletes are able to do in addition to competing. Oh, nice. And I mean, how do you kind of do that? It's like, it's a 12 hour shift, I heard. Yep. And then after that, yeah, I'm just gonna go work out. I mean, everybody <laughs> else would probably go die. I need my sleep, I need my family time, I need everything else. A very impressive and a beautiful lift. Three, and Carrie two, Hewitt, good at 65 one, kilos. Lift. Up next will be Emma Willis from 80-20. Good lift as well. Next onto the floor will be CrossFit Mayflower, Three, Helena two, Collins and one, Janie Garrett. Rotate. Garrett in front, Collins just behind her, and it looks like Three, Collins two, one, will be the second lift. to lift. As we can see, Amy May Sutton still making her way through the ladder, but just unable to pull underneath that 72 kilo barbell. And I think we kind of we kind of saw where this could potentially go with the power cleans. I mean, she's got a lot of power, but she's going to have to get her two, center of mass one, lower to be able to receive receive that bar. It looks like she just wasn't comfortable pulling underneath that bar, and that's going to do it for the crew from CrossFit with them. Somebody who is very comfortable pulling on that bar, though, that is Steinun from the Katla team as she gets under 70 kilos. Up next, we have CrossFit Trondheim. Three, two, Ingrid one, Tondel and Vur Thurman Mo. One of the teams inside the Three, top five overall two, coming one, into this event. Lift. Both athletes from CrossFit Katla on the left at the 72 kilo barbell. And just behind them, Carrie Andrei. Hewitt is good at 70 kilos. And that's Andrea, they're looking very comfortable. Three, two, one, lift. And stay tuned from CrossFit Katla on the left. Emma Willis on the right from CrossFit 8020. And both of them are good. It's just a love seeing that, as we talked about, every lift has looked the same. Three, two, so Madeline Harris one, and Charlotte Spence from rotate. Aylesbury on the way onto the floor. And both Madeline and Charlotte Spence were on the Aylesbury team Three, at the games last two, year. So one, bringing back some consistency lift. for their team this season. Seventy-five kilos, CrossFit Catla. That is Andrea on the bar. Nice consistency of technique continues to pay off for the Catla team. It's amazing Three, to think just two, how many one, women are making quick work of this seventy-five kilo barbell. We're just, you know, let, 
a half decade ago, it was impressive if you were an individual athlete moving this way. Yeah. Ah, oh, Stainen's got to be happy with that. Oh, she gets a no rep. Unfortunately, not quite able to stabilize it at the top. Drop the bar oh, a little bit too soon. Two, one, <laughs> maybe a quick, maybe a little bump there on the head, but it looks like she's all right. Three, two, one. Sarpsborg on the way onto the floor. Emily Müller Olsen, Lynn Finster. Lynn Finstad will be the first to lift. She's relatively new to CrossFit after retiring from gymnastics, where she was a national level competitor. Looks like that may be it for the CrossFit Katva team. As we now move to 75 kilos. Oh, nice for Emma Willis. And there is the women pairing from your overall leader, CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue, Lena Richter, Ingrid Honnemir. Arguably two of the best women in this team competition. Three, two, I've been hearing rumors one, that they're both going to go all the way through the ladder, and I'm looking forward to seeing. I know that they lift very, very well. I know that they have a great lifting coach in Oslo as well, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. We just saw a good lift from Carrie Hewitt, the fittest female doctor on earth. In at 77 Three, kilos. Two, one, lift. Nice. And Emma Willis is in. That's the look of an athlete who hit their goal weight, Mads. That looks, you could tell by the celebration at the bottom, that was probably it the is. barbell she had circled. And it looked Three, it looked better two, than her previous lift one, as well. Rotate. See Vera Koskalainen here on your screen, rooting on her teammate from North Engine CrossFit, Yudis Rosenloff, still out two, on the floor. One, lift. So 79 kilos, left side of your screen. No problem. No problem for Carrie Hewitt. Yudis Rosenloff just missed at 77 kilos. We'll reload to try and get a second attempt in here before the time. And that's going to do it for the women pairing from North Engine CrossFit. <laughs> oh, man. She looks pretty fired up about that. You love to see it. In this lift with the snatch, sometimes it's hard to explain, but when the iron is hot, you just keep striking because Three, two, <laughs> those days are few and far between sometimes for a well-trained athlete. And imagine having one of those days in a setting like this. A, a, a really loud crowd at a great competition. Three, uh, that's two, one. If you're going to have lift. that, they have it now. Carrie Hewitt with her chance to clear the ladder. No problem at 81 She's kilos so for Carrie nice. Hewitt. I'm not going to lie, that didn't look too much different from the barbell behind her at 61 kilos. No, not at all. It's just a lot Three, of confidence in that two, lift. One, lift. So let's see Emma here. Oh, you've got Not one more. Not quite able to get underneath it for Emma Willis on the right-hand side of your screen. Antonia Falk Kodolinski is good at 77 kilos for Nordic Original. Yes. Three, yes, two, there you go. Rotate. And the magic continues <laughs> for CrossFit 8020 as Emma Willis also clears the ladder to join her teammate, Three, Carrie Hewitt. Two, and now one, the decision as lift. to who will make their way to the 11th platform. It looked like she was happy at the weight before, but then, you know, she's, ah, oh, let me try to see what I can do. Hey, you know, the barbells just kept going up, so I just kept Don't lifting stop. them. No Can't reason to go anywhere. Can't say I know what that feels like, but you know, <laughs> I've read about it. Three, two, <laughs> heard, uh, heard one, athletes talk about it. Lift. Yeah. 
This is Antonio Falt Kotolinski from Nordic Original. At 79 kilos. Yes. That looked easy. Yes. Now she has been having a great lifting period lately. Um, I did see her post a on, on social media post a 90 kilo snatch. It didn't look too heavy either. Three, so two, depending on how one, she feels, we'll see where that rotate. goes. And for 80-20, this could be a huge result. They were in six, just 10 points back of fifth coming into Three, this event. Two, Both women one, clear the ladder, lift. should help bolster their team standings. Eighty-four kilos. And that is good at eighty-four kilos for Carrie Hewitt as CrossFit 8020 is perfect in the snatch ladder. Both athletes clear the ladder. Carrie Hewitt Three, two, makes her lift at eighty-four one, kilos on that final platform. That was a beautiful lift. That, that was good. And a good lift for Mantoni as well at eighty-one kilos. She was a member of CrossFit Nordic's games team last season as well. She was, and here, this is where it gets interesting. So she knows Three, that Michaela had to two, tap out pretty early. One, she knows she needs a bunch of points. Eight. She knows that she's got a 90 kilo snatch recently in the bank. Do you go for it and put a bunch of weight on the barbell? Three, or do you kind of try to play it safe and go, what was the highest lift, lift that's been on in the competition so far? We see CrossFit Mayflower in Janie Garrett. 81 kilos, nice. that is good. Oh, good lift. She gets a <laughs> some light applause from Helena Collins. And being able to bring Three, both athletes two, to the final barbell one, before you get to the 11th lift. platform, it is huge for the standings. Looked like a good pull from Helena Collins, just not able to lock it out. It was, and it, I'm not sure, it just looked like confidence, kind of like I'm not used to this kind of weight on the barbell, because it was a great first attempt. Now get after Three, it and sit down. Two, one, oh. oh! And it looked like it was there, maybe just a little soft through the shoulders, but a yes. good attempt from Helena Collins Three, as CrossFit Mayflower two, will send one, an athlete to that 11th barbell. And now the question is, the choice from Antonia Falk Kotolinski, 86 kilos on the barbell. Yes. There she goes. And that is good, and that is a huge lift for the Nordic original team. As Falk Kotolinski, good at 86 kilos, Three, and that ties two, the top lift that we one. have seen thus far on the women's side. It does, and they need that from the outing that they had in the event two last or yesterday. Oh, that was a close miss. I think that's Trondheim. Yep. Yes. Thurman Mo on the barbell. Three, two, one, rotate. Not quite able to get a lift in at 81 kilos. And that's going to do it for the, Three, the CrossFit two, Trondheim team. One, Ingrid Tondel lift. and Wood Thurman Mo. So Aylesbury on the 81 kilo barbell. At the same time at 84 kilos going up. Yes, 84 kilos going up. Jamie no Garrett, 84 <laughs> kilos from CrossFit Mayflower. And man, those are those are tears of happiness right now. It looks like <laughs> both teammates may be a little surprised that she got it, but but she did that well. That was a good, good lift. Not just the hey, you get the point. It's a good lift. Elated nonetheless, and a well-deserved celebration from Janie Garrett and her teammate Helena Collins for CrossFit Mayflower. Man, you gotta love Three, that. Uh, this two, is this is what one. you can't beat. This. I mean, it's, that sounds like a cheap slogan from somebody, but you can't beat this <laughs> feeling. It's just, it is amazing to be able to sit here and watch this in this raw Three, emotion. Two, one, lift. And surprise, surprise, the final two athletes left on the ladder, Lena Richter and Ingrid Hodnemja from CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. And that is good at 79 for Richter. Ingrid looking pretty happy as well.
And I'm sorry, I oh, just spoke. Sport. And Sopspor's female athlete still out there as well. Emily Moller Olsen from CrossFit Sopspor at 81 kilos. Oh, no problem. Wow, like it's nobody's business. That there almost you go. looked like a power snatch. My Ooh. apologies to Ol Emily Moller Olsen. And she will have a crack at Three, that 11th platform. Two, one, rotate. Now the question Three, is, two, will someone from Oslo one, Navy Blue join her? I think they will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you gotta love that. <laughs> At the bottom, you see a quick smile like, yeah, I got this. Yeah, checking out the crowd. Do you guys want to take your, take your pictures? Take it now. I don't think I've smiled at the bottom of an 81 Three, kilo statue. If anything, I've ever been one, surprised. It's like, <laughs> is, this, is this really overhead now? Disbelief, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. And that's going to be good for <laughs> Ingrid as both of the Oslo Navy Blue women clear the ladder. It looks like Lena Richter will be the one to advance to this last platform. 90 kilos on the barbell. And here we go, Emily Moller Olsen, 90 kilos on the barbell. That will be the heaviest attempt that we have seen thus far for the women. for Emily Muller Olsen in CrossFit Subsport as she nails 90 kilos. And I'm not going to lie, Matt, she smoked that. That was beautiful. It was amazing. I love oh, wow. And now it's up to Lena Richter to follow that. <laughs> Congratulations, you get to follow that lift. And Richter will have a few more seconds to rest and recover as she calls Three, for 86 two, kilos on one, the barbell. Rotate. Three, two, one, lift. Here is Lena Richter, 86 kilos on the bar for Oslo Navy Blue. Ah, oh, yes! Nice! I love the way she catches that lift in the bottom position, sits there and goes, yes, I've got it, and then stands up. And I like to see her this happy. Yeah, that was a neat little <laughs> celebration there from Lena Richter with her teammate as Oslo Navy Blue gets both women through the ladder. And Lena Richter nails her chosen weight at 86. So 86 kilos, and look at the way she catches it in the bottom, just sits there for a second, looks, yes, I've got it, and then stands up. Beautiful, beautiful lift from Lena Richter to close out this heat for Oslo Navy Blue. A pretty good display of lifting we got to kick off our Saturday with here, Matt. It's not just that it's heavy, it's, it's, it's just beautiful lifting as well. And that's one of the things that, you can, that gets exposed as you have a, 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 a snatch ladder like this, is that beautiful technique, your technique all together will win you the day. And, and look at that, 90 kilos. Yeah, speaking of beautiful technique, Emily Muller Olsen, 90 kilos for CrossFit Sarpsborg. And that is the top lift that we saw in this event for any female athlete from the teams. We've got a packed house here on Saturday. At day number two is CrossFit Strength in Depth. Just a reminder for all up-to-date information as re and results, be sure to head on over to games.crossfit.com. Great crowd here in London, England at the Excel London Arena. We have a community event going on, just a few feet over on the side floor. We've got a qualifying event for the CrossFit Games. What more could you ask for? Sarpsborg had the best lift of the women pairing, and down on the floor, joining them now is Biva Masvater. Wow, guys. First, congratulations with the 90 kilo lift. Um, what was the plan going into this event? Uh, it was to be calm all the way, because I know I can lift heavy. 
Uh, I have a maximum 93 kilos, but it's a while ago since I snatched so heavy. Uh, and the last week on training, it's been 87. And I thought that this time I need to like go a little bit higher than I normally do. I want to like uh, pressure, like a little bit pressure on myself. It's good yeah. Enough. And it worked. And it worked. Um, going into an, an uh, event like this, how are the nerves? Definitely a lot of nerves. <laughs> um, just trying to stay calm. Just uh, do as we do every day in training, yeah. So one event down for the day, one more to go. What is the plan between now and then? Sorry? What is your plan until the ne next event starts? We are going to go home, get some food, change, relax, and get ready. <laughs> I like it. Thank you, guys. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Biba. One event down for the teams. Here is your schedule the rest of the way. The men will be up first to tackle the heavy lift complex, followed by the women, and then we will reset for team event four and follow the same order here to close out day number two in strength and depth. The teams move some heavy barbells. Now it's the individual's turn. We'll be right back in just a moment with individual event three. The 2022 CrossFit Semifinals are presented by Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. By Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. By Thorn, the official supplement partner of CrossFit. The U.S. Army, know your army. And by Arasti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. No bull. Hi everybody and welcome. We're going to first begin by talking about the definition of CrossFit. All right guys, go ahead and sit back and down. Fight for that position. Push your knees apart from each other. Just like that, excellent job. This is a fitness that is considered broad, general, and inclusive. What's the biggest impact I can have on this athlete right here in this second? Castings. For simple shapes, a complete solid pattern may be used. A mold box is filled with special molding sand that is rammed home around the pattern. The molten metal at precisely the right temperature is poured into the mold. The assemblies are tumbled. Shaping is done with the aid of machinery and the fine finish is evidence of the craftsmanship that has gone to their design and construction. The reason I started using Thorn products was because uh, Steph Nikita, she was very influential in terms of what products we should use and what are the good products out there. I always want to make sure that I'm sharing trusted companies and products with others and Thorn definitely fits that. NSF is a priority for me because I know it's a quality product. NSF certification is a gold standard for supplements. You know that what it says on the label is actually in the bottle. The uh, doctor said my season uh, was uh, totally over, but it was not only that. He told me, oh, maybe you will not be able to go back to the top of your sports. Lots of persons forgot me after injury. It was, okay, we need done. Oh, ne next athlete. I'm really angry to show to some, some persons that I'm, I'm not done and I can do some good stuff in CrossFit again. Dear coach, thank you. Thank you for always being there. For running a class at 5.30 in the morning so I can get home before my kids wake up. 
for making sure I build on my strengths and work on my weaknesses. For being a compass that guides me toward a better version of myself. For constantly putting the needs of others before your own. For helping me lose 100 pounds last year. For helping me realize that asthma can't stop me from achieving my goals. For reaffirming that life doesn't head downhill after the age of 40. For making the impossible possible. For being an amazing coach, friend, and mentor. Thank you. Thank you for always being there.
Welcome to the floor, our first heat of male athletes. We have Bartek Lipka, Sami Wright, Dimitri Potiu, Daniel Camacho, Christoph Horvath, Jan Matiaska, and Jan Arn Finkenberg. Thirty seconds. Stand by. Three, two, one, lift. So Bartek Lipka has one minute to attempt his lift. Three cleans, two front squats, and one jerk. So each minute, a different athlete will be added to the queue. Bartek Lipka has another minute to make his second attempt. Three cleans completed. Two front squats. Final part of the complex. One jerk. Well done.
three, two, one, lift. Crystal Horvath and Jan Arn Finkenberg taking their first attempt.
one lift. Next up, we've got Crystal Corbach and Yana Sinkenberg. One, four, five for Crystal. Three, two, one. 
Welcome back inside the Excel London Arena for day two. Here the strength and depth. The heavy barbells are out, and it's time to lift some weight. Thanks for joining us here, Tommy Marquez, alongside Mads Jacobson. Viva Mazdotter will be joining us later on. And Mads, this barbell complex is going to put your lifting ability to the test. Well, it, def it definitely does. It is three attempts for a max load of three cleans, two front squats, one jerk or a shoulder to overhead. There is one minute per lift, four minutes between lifts. This event brought to you by the U.S. Army, and it was just a week ago that we saw the mark to be set by who else but Anthony Davis. Gets in a lift at 355 pounds. For all of us here in Kilo land, it is 161 kilos, roughly. And that's, that's a tall task to try and match. It, it, wrap your head around that. That's a lot of people's one rip that deadlift max. <laughs> oh, man. With that in mind, your recipes for success delivered by Trifecta. Well, the first one is no hope and then all in. You've got three attempts. No, Get the first one on there so you get a result on the board. A weight that you hope to be able to kind of, kind of get. Second lift. Third lift. Hail Mary. Everything you've got. Now you're making your move. 
Then the other one is power clean to make the jerk. We're seeing a lot of athletes as we progress through this who start squat cleaning pretty early. And as, as they do, they miss the jerk. So if you can, power clean it, save your legs. Lane assignments for this second of three heat on the men's side. A couple athletes to keep your eye on. Simone Mitele and Andre Hude. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see him now out there. Three, two, one, lift. Well, so we start out with Marcus Tinglum Petterson. Left side of your screen, right side of your screen should be Marcus Eriksson. It is not, got that wrong, sorry. So left side of your screen there, you've got Marius in the front and you have Marcus in the back. Marius, that starts out with 125. I believe that looks like Alexander Pinsole. That is it. That is, that is Alexandro Pinsole, yeah. 132 on the barbell. That is good for him. In at 132. Judging off of this first heat that just went by a second ago, we saw a lot of athletes in that 130 to 135 range. We did, but we did see Christoph Horvath get 150. Yeah, that is the Three, mark two, to beat so far one, through one heat. Lift. 150 set by Christoph Horvath as Marcus Eriksson and Simon Mitele line up for their first lift. And Simon uh, Mentele should not have a problem at all at the 136, and you can see him looking pretty comfortable. Marcus Eriksson on the left side of your screen going for 130. No problem for Simone at 136. And a good lift at 130 for Marcus Eriksson. Yep. The interesting part is if you start at 136, you still have you still have a, no, no, another 14 kilos up to the heaviest weight so far. Is that a jump you're comfortable with making? Next athletes in the back is Brian Hernandez, and the front is PD Savage. Three, two, one, lift. Savage on your left, Hernandez on the right. PD Savage, one of the top athletes on the male side out of Ireland. Hernandez, former national champion of Colombia. Nice to see him in Europe. I believe he has dual citizenship. Oh! PD oh. Savage not getting the jerk. That's a surprise on his opening lift. And it looked like he might be able to eke it out, but unable to get the lockout for PD Savage. Well, Hernandez is good at 132. All right, Matt, you have that first lift that you should know you can hit, but it doesn't go well. Maybe the jerk isn't quite there. Do you go up? Do you stay there? Looks like PD might be going up just a few kilos. I think he knows exactly. He's such a seasoned competitor. He knows exactly why that didn't happen. Three, it wasn't that he two, wasn't strong enough. One, it was lift. just that he did, wasn't happy with the execution. And Andre Uday on the left-hand side of your screen, 142. <laughs> that is the biggest starting weight that we see on the the floor right now out of this second heat of men. And right. look at the speed on the barbell. It's It's... No problem for Andre Uday and Reggie Fossa. Almost through 136. Nice. Good nice. lift for Reggie Fossa. He talked about the speed there. Uday was done with his lift before Fossa even got to the front squats. Exactly. And it's, you're saying, what we're saying is only three attempts, but it's a lot of time under tension. And Andre Houdet is gonna he's gonna feel a whole lot better because he didn't have to spend that much time under under tension Three, so under the bar. Two, one, lift. Up next on your left, Zach George, opening with 136. Elliot Genin opening with 125. No surprise seeing George hitting a few power cleans here to open up this complex. Looking forward to the jerk now. Ah. Push jerk from George or a power jerk. 
But he's going to have to watch it because that lockout was borderline. You also saw his, his left foot there kind of creep out to yeah. the left. It just kind of changes the texture of where your landing is if you land off of the wooden platform. And it's not like it's going to be a problem for him to put it overhead. It's just I'm thinking, hold on to it for a second just to make sure the judge is happy. We're back to the front of the line here for this second round of lifting. Alexander Pizzolea at 140. Marius Petterson, 130. Yep. 130. Two, one, lift. Second barbell, we've already seen both of these athletes transition to the full clean where a little bit of a change up from that first barbell. We saw a lot of power cleans. Yep. And as a consequence, you see Mario's just a little bit of a struggle on that lockout on the shoulder overhead. And the same thing for Alexander who has to step off of the platform and stepping. I'm not sure not if sure. that will count. No. I don't think you are able to exit the platform. Have to double check on Three, that. Two, one, lift. Simon Müntele now at or Mentula now at 141. Marcus Eriksson at 135. Talking with Simon before this event. People here know, but maybe if you're watching at home, you might not be aware. He can only see through his left eye. He lost vision in his right eye in an accident as a kid. One of his goals is to come out here, compete, and be an inspiration for anyone nice. with a similar handicap. And you know, let them know that, hey, just because something unfortunate may have happened, you can still continue to pursue your dreams and compete at a high level. I think he's doing a great job. It's, it's, it's both the competitive results, but also the way he competes and just hangs out with people. It's a very, very nice guy. And a great lift. Three, he's got to be happier with two, that than the opening lift. One, lift. So PD Savage now has added weight. He's at 136. Brian Hernandez, one th oh, sorry, 137 and 137 for Brian Hernandez as well. And we saw PD miss that opening lift. I believe at 135, he missed the jerk. And interesting to see Hernandez a little bit more conservative on that opening lift. And you know what? Here we are, both athletes at the same weight. It's the shoulders for PD. And that is a rough turn of events for PD Savage. A good lift from nice. Brian Hernandez, 137 in the bag. Yep. And now a big question for PD Savage. Where does he go from here? One lift left. you got to make sure you get something out on the board. Otherwise, you're taking a zero on this event. Three, I mean, two, he did look pretty comfortable. One, I would have probably lift. stayed with that weight right there. 146 on the Ehudeh. Beautiful technique from Uday. Just every angle is beautiful. Reggie Fossa on nice. your right with 141. Uday locks it out good at 146. And then when you get a chance to look at Andre Uday when he lifts, look at the way he kind of achieves that full lockout, which is a bit of a challenge for a lot of us out here who are not competitive weightlifters. Drives his head, his head through his arms so decisively and allows the weight to get it to get really centered above his uh, above his, his hip. And then he's had a great split, so he's not jumping into the land, he's splitting his legs instead, pulling them apart. A good lift from Fossa at 141. Three, That's gotta two, feel good. We saw one, a lot of athletes lift. hung up around the 140 mark in that previous heat, so should keep him competitive here. So last two athletes out there, this is uh, Zach George, 143. Elliot Ganin at 131. Oh! 
And a good lift from George, able to save that jerk. It's got to be nice to be able to press out <laughs> 143 kilos like that. Just pure shoulder strength right yep. there. Oh. in not quite able to lock out 131 as we reset for the third and final round here of heat number two. If you're not freakishly strong, what you have to do on that on that shoulder to overhead is you have to pop it with your hip. Then for the time that the bar is going to be weightless, you need to position yourself underneath, Three, get the full extension two, so you use your legs one, to drive out. Lift. Final lift for Marius Petersen and Alexander Pinzolet. Looks like Pinzolet only going up by a kilo. The previous lift was 140. Yeah, but it was a bit of a struggle for him on the last one, so I think that's pretty smart, actually. Yeah, maybe just deciding, hey, just an extra kilo, maybe give me a tiebreaker over some athletes that might go for 140 clean. Yes. <laughs> a great fight from Peterson. He's able to lock down 135 as his final lift. <laughs> he looked pretty happy with that as well. Former member of CrossFit Oslo last year at the Games. Now making a turn at the individual competition. Rocking the iconic Krieger, Krieger uh, training um, t-shirt from Kristen Holtis camp. So yeah, good to see him out there. All right, Marcus E. Eriksson, 141. Simon Mentula, 146. Not able to lock out that jerk. Everything looked good up until that point. Good patience, good cadence through the cleans and the front squats. Nice, Marcus. You've seen the same thing on his overhead position. Push the head through and make sure you get that full extension so you're not holding onto it with your shoulders. He's in at 141. That will be his final tally Three, two, for the lift. One, lift. So he this is where it gets exciting for PD. He's still at 137. This is a huge lift for him. Oh, 137 on the bar. Brian Hernandez, 141 on the right. Slightly different task between these two gentlemen. Yes, PD has it. And what a gutsy oh. lift from PD Savage. Double clutches on the dip to adjust there for that final jerk and really had to dig deep in that split to make sure he was able to lock it out. Oh. It's, so, it's such a different world. PD is out there fighting for his life. Am I going to get anything on the board? At the same time as Hernandez goes, hey, 141, I'm, just, I'm swinging for the fences. Yeah, take the shot. Slightly two, different, one, different exercises or ch challenges so close to each other. And for someone in PD Savage, I know had hopes of maybe making the games. That type of lift there saves your weekend. Yep. And Andre Hude here looking to match the mark to beat at 150. And we talk a lot about the athlete camps. Andre is the other direction. He moved away from kind of the, the city, if you will, trains by himself, likes the focus of just being by himself to really dial things in. And it, it's proven fruitful in the last year qualifying for the games for the first time. Oh, nice. I'm surprised that Andre goes for 150. He knows the heaviest so far is 150. So why not go 151? Because it's not like he was challenged by that lift. Also with a good lift at 146. <laughs> That's going to be a nice boost for him. That will be the second outside of the tie between Three, Uday two, and Horvath. Four, that will be the second lift. heaviest lift that we have seen thus far. Yeah, interesting that Uday started at 142 and only went in four kilo increments. Now Zach George with 148 on the bar. Elliot Ganin, another attempt at 131. These squats actually look better than in the previous set for George. Oh. 
just not able to press that one out for George. He will finish. I mean, that would have been ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> press out at 148 kilograms. That would, it's just, I mean, there are limits to things that you can do, even when you're really, 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 really strong. Very few people can do that, but an <laughs> impressive showing from Zach George, <laughs> yes. nonetheless. But the top lift in this heat goes to Andre Uday. And it's not just the weight on the bar, it's the way he does it. It is beautiful. There is no angle that is not, it's not executed the right way. I mean, this really was a master class in weightlifting here. Just, if <laughs> you had to point to someone and say, that's how you're supposed to do it, that's how it's supposed to look, it's exactly what it is. I'm the most impressed with that. I mean, obviously he's strong for the cleans and he's strong for the front squats, but it's just that shoulder overhead position. His dip, the perfect, perfect depth on the dip. He's not too fast, so he doesn't lose the barbell and then tackles it on the way up. Maintains contact with his shoulders, then drives it all the way up and splits his legs instead of jumping. I love that. Heat two is done. One more heat of men to go. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, the top man's heat takes their turn at this complex. Stay with us, folks. Action continues here on day number two at CrossFit Strength in Depth as the top men's heat gets ready to take the floor and lift some heavy weight. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Tommy Marquez here alongside Mads Jacobson. We have a mass daughter, our third member of our team. We'll be along in just a moment. And these are your standings after day number one coming into today. Willie George making a resurgence after a year off due to injury. He's your overall leader. Three games bets right behind him. Elliot Simmons, Henrik Hapalainen, and Jorgis Karavis. Your event description, the barbell complex presented by the U.S. Army. Well, it is three attempts for a max load of three cleans, two front squats, one jerk or a shoulder to overhead. There's one minute per lift and four minutes in between lifts. And this top men's heat is going to have their work cut out for them. The top lifts seen thus far, starting with the first heat, and Christoph Horvath strikes first with a, a good lift at 150. He's pumped up, got the crowd going in here. And then heat number two, Andre Hude says, that sounds pretty good, I'll have some of that. He loads up 150 for his final lift. No problem with the jerk, and he matches Horvath's mark from an earlier heat, and those are your top two lifts coming into this third and final heat. 
We've got the complex mads. Your recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Well, I think there are two components to it. I think the first one is that the first lift you get, it needs to be a weight that you know you can get. The second one was the one you hope for, and the last one is one that you can kind of throw everything for the fences. The last one, if you can, then power clean it, because that will make the jerk a whole lot easier. These are your land assignments for the top men's heat, as well as your top 10 men overall. They're gonna have to move some weight if they want to keep pace here, considering we saw some pretty impressive lifts from those earlier heats. Three, two, one, lift. On the left-hand side of your screen, Antoine Dumaine. Tommaso Pieri on the other, on the right side. 130 and 136 for their openers. Mads, you said, you know, that first lift is something you know you can hit. So this is more than likely something that they have routinely practiced with in the lead up to this event. As soon as they knew that it was going to be one of these events that would be at every at every semifinal, I think they, I would imagine they started immediately. That being said, we saw Tommaso Pieri right now in a little bit of trouble with the, uh, with the shoulder overhead. We saw PD Savage earlier in trouble as well. So you never know. Not able to lift Three, or make two, that jerk one, was Pietti, but if there's any consolation, PD Savage was able to miss the first two and come back strong in the third and final lift to keep his weekend alive. Now, Alex Katulis on the left-hand side of your screen. Yonikoski on the right. 130 on the bar for Katulis, 132 for Koski. Interesting technique from Koski with a little bit of bounce in the bottom of the cleans. There you go, you're on there. And this is not a strength event, not typically his forte, but in this environment, he does have the advantage of seeing what everyone else has on the bar. And I need to adjust accordingly. But exactly, but I think. For somebody like Yomne, I think it's important that he just kind of has a plan and he sticks with that. This is not an event that he's supposed to go out there and win. It's the one that he's not supposed to lose, though. So go out there and do as well as you can. Stick to your game plan Three, within one or two, two kilos deviation. One, but that's pretty much it. Guillaume Briant up next on the left-hand side of your screen in lane three. 136 on the bar. And Luke Hansen, 140, one of the bigger starting weights that we've seen. He is in the fifth position right now, holding on to the final games qualification spot. Been a bit of a surprise and looking to continue his hot streak here, opening big with 140. Well, he has, and I mean, it's easy to get caught on the whole, you know, I used to be a marathon runner. He used to also play handball. And if there's a rough explosive sport where you need to have that combination of, of great explosivity and then also being able to navigate yourself, well, through impact, I'd say, it is handball. So, I mean, not surprised to see him do very well. I'm just surprised and happy that he went for a 140 in the opener. Appreciate the insight there because handball, not not a, a sport you really see in the United States. Well, and it's a treacherous sport because it's not supposed to be a contact sport. But if there's anything out there that is, Three, it is a contact two, sport. One, lift. Up next, Jorgos Karavis, 135 on the bar. Heinrich Kapalainen, 136. Both these athletes in a tie for points right now on the leaderboard for third. They traded event wins on day number one. Hapalainen winning that first event. Jorgis absolutely destroying that second event to close out yesterday. That was a good lift by Hendrik. I think he had a better lift. Now, Karavis looked, he was faster and he looked pretty, it, like it was fairly effortless. But it wasn't a very, it wasn't a very technically sound lift from Caravis, so which wonder makes me wonder how much more do you have in the tank? So my current man crush one and two, Elliot Simmons and Willie George. <laughs> Three, two, one, lift. Elliot Simmons on the right, one twenty-five. Willie George, one thirty-six. This is an important event for Willie coming off of that. Shoulder surgery and caught up with him before the event and talking to him in Miami at Waterpalooza. He said one of the few things that was slow to come back was his ability to feel weight overhead in space. Yeah. Think heavy snatches, heavy jerks. 
It just takes time. Yep. First one is good for him at 136, so a good start for Willie. Elliot Simmons, same thing, no problem whatsoever. Happy to see, and that's one of the questions we had coming into this, this the shoulder surgery. I mean, if anybody didn't see the scar on Willie's shoulder yesterday during the interview, then you were looking the other way. But so what does that mean? Like, how does that, because I know he's, he's good at power cleaning. You know he's strong, he has strong legs, but how, what does that mean for his shoulder? So I'm happy to see him strong and happy, so to speak. Yep. Three, two, one, lift. We're back to the beginning here with Antoine Dumain and Tommaso Pieri for their second lift. And Tommaso Pieri missed the shoulder to overhead on the last one, so he really needs to get this to have something on the board. A little bit oh. of desperation time for Tommaso Pieri at one with one lift remaining because he is 0 for 2 now. If I were him, I'd drop the weight on the bar because he wasn't close to getting that locked out overhead. I'd drop the weight on the bar just to make sure he gets something on Three, the board. And you two, are allowed to drop one, the weight. Lift. You're not stuck at whatever you started at, so maybe a slight adjustment in technique is warranted here. Alex Catulis, 135. John Nikoski at 137. Starting to see athletes kind of fudge a few kilos here, left or right, just to kind of give themselves an edge. You, know, you typically see the, the nice round or even numbers, the zeros, the fives. Oh. That's a tough break for Koski. No good at 137. 137. And Man, the nature of this complex is you can get all the way to the end. And the most fickle movement of them all is that jerk. And, and it's, just, it, I mean, it, we're seeing it again and again and again. It's not a problem. It's a weight that people don't have a problem with throwing overhead at all. It's just you squat it twice before that and potentially even squat Three, clean as well. So two, that one, explosivity is not where it, where it should be. You can do a lot of work and not get any credit for it in this complex. As Guillaume Briant, 141. Ludwig Hansen, 140, 144, excuse me. That's a good lift by Guillaume Briand. Ludwig Hansson. Both athletes two for two so far. Oh, look what we got here. A little con porter in the building. <laughs> Maybe doing a little scouting on behalf of Reykjavik. It's always nice to see Khan in the house. I mean, he's, he's such a nice guy. I talked to him yesterday as well. He looked like he was really enjoying the competition as well. Competition aside, he is a fan of the sport and friends as well with many of these athletes. Jorgis Kervis at 143. Heinrich Kapelainen, 141. And this is interesting. So the, I, I said the Kervis technique on the first one, on the first lift wasn't necessarily super good, but he felt comfortable with it. Maybe that's what it, what it was. Because Hapalainen's technique is more solid. Just, maybe just needed to grease the group because Jorgis made an eight kilo jump there. Yep. Actually opened with a lighter weight than Hapalainen, and now he's actually overtaken them through two lifts. Yep. And he still looked pretty effortless. Or effortless, I mean, that's, you know. Well, true, relatively some, speaking, of course. Relatively speaking, yes. And Elliot Simmons now at 130. Behind him, Willie Three, George at 142. Two, one, lift. Willie George looking very good. It's also nice to see that good front rack position from George because 
You know, a lot of people think about the overhead, the, all the complex elements of the lifts, but just being able to get into a front rack position after heavy shoulder surgery is a huge win in itself. That's not necessarily easy, no. Simmons is good at 130. George hits his lift at 142. As we reset for the third and final round of lifts. Tommaso Pieri, who missed his first two lifts at 136, Three, has two, now dropped to 131 one, in hopes of getting a good lift in here. I just hope these first two attempts haven't gotten in his head. Antoine Dumas is at 141, hasn't started lifted yet. Antoine taking his time, set up for the bar at 141. Dumaine not able to get through the cleans, and so he will be unable to break the 140 mark. And that's a good lift from Pieri. That's got to be a huge sigh of relief. You missed the first two, backs against the wall. Got to maybe check your ego, drop it down a little bit, and get a good lift in. I think what he needs to do is he needs to widen that grip on the, on the shoulder to overhead just a little bit so it matches the, the width he gets on that split. He came into this event in ninth Three, overall, so two, you know in contention one, for those lift. last chance qualifier spots. Looked like Dumaine was trying to give another a go at 141. Now we have Yonokoski at 138. And Alex Katulis at 138 as well. Oh, nice. Oh. And that's a good lift for Koski. Katulis unable to lock it out, and a nice rebound for Koski, who missed his second lift, comes back with the third, and right now he's four points shy of the fifth place spot, so Three, every little two, lift matters for him. One, lift. And this is gonna shake the leaderboard a bit. Guillaume Briant, 143. Ludwig Hansen, 146. Ludwig Hansen is <clears throat> squat cleaning on this set as well as he has on the ones before, and I'm just wondering how that's going to affect his his jerk. And Guillaume has yet to approach the bar, so Hansen is lifting all alone. Barbell ends up in front. And you can Three, see that from Hans that he felt like he might one, be able to give it a crack. Briant did not make an attempt there. Interestingly enough, he's looks like he's talking and arguing with his coach, maybe off to the side as his coach is standing to the left of us here in the broadcast booth. For Hansen, he will have to settle for 144. Jorgis Karavis at 146. Andre Kapalan at 145. How does Karabas do it? I don't know, but he just got 146. Sheer force of will <laughs> from the powerful Greek. And Apollinen's in at 145. Those will be good for two of the heavier lifts that we've seen, because we've got two at 150. We had a, a lift at 146 in that previous heat as well by Reggie Fossa. So, 145, 146, maybe in contention Three, for a top two, five, top six one, lift here. Lift. Yeah, now Willie George on the left side of your screen's got 147 on the bar. Smart move by George, maybe break that tie and get a clean third place here. The advantage of being a higher seated athlete, you get to see everything in front of you. George yeah. knows that, hey, I may not get the 150, but I could be in a clean third place overall with this 147. Look at the pace 
of Willie George. There you go. And a huge lift from George at 147. That might keep him in the overall lead. <laughs> and Elliot Simmons good at 136, and he's fired up. You can hear the UK crowd rallying behind him here as the top heat of men close out of N3. That was huge. <laughs> that was a six kilo jump for Elliot Simmons. Took a little bit of a chance there, and it paid off. But Willie George will have the top lift from this final heat. An impressive showing by Willie as he continues his comeback. And I love the way he plays that as well, because he could have gone heavier. There was a lot more in the tank on that. But he knew what he wanted to do, and he knew what he needed to do to maintain his position. And that's what he went out there and did. So and let's have a, have a look at it. No problem power cleaning that whatsoever. So strong. Next one looks identical. And then once we get to the front squats, have a look at the speed. There's no sticky point. It's just a bop. There you go. And then he does the same thing again. Widens the grip a little bit. And there you go. And it is the shoulder that gives him, you know, that's the challenging part for him. And you have to imagine that, like you said, at least from the clean and front squat perspective, he had more in the tank. But 147 is a phenomenal lift from Willie George. And it should be good enough for third overall in the event. Willie George continues his strong weekend here at Strength and Depth. And this allows him to go home and train. I mean, he doesn't, why would you want to aggravate that shoulder? Go home, train. Let's say that you qualify for the games and make sure that you're better at the games instead of, you know, getting injured on the way. The men are done here with the opening event on day number two. Everybody loves the big lifts and the biggest lift one of them goes to Andre Hude, who is standing by with Biba Mass' daughter. Uh, Andre, congratulations. Thanks a huge so lift, 150 kilos. Uh, what do you think about the complex? Uh, the complex? I think it's cool. I, uh, I like weightlifting a lot. Uh, it's, it's a tough complex, a lot of repetitions. It's, it requires you to be very technical, efficient, and have a lot of like capacity at heavier loads, which is something I wouldn't think I had, but Apparently good enough to uh, to take the win for this one. Mm -hmm. You looked so confident on the floor. Uh, did you have a strategy like going into the event? Yeah, I have a strategy for all the events, and I have really promised myself to follow them from A to set the whole weekend. So the plan was 142, 146, 150, regardless of what the others would lift. Okay, so what's the plan for the next event, the chipper? Um, I also have a pretty specific strategy for for the following events and the next one is a chipper so very different event very different stimulus i'm, I'm looking forward to it thank you thank good you luck you. tremendous performance from andre Ude. much needed 100 points that's going to wrap up event three for the men up next we'll have the women's turn at the heavy barbell complex and then we'll round out our nice little saturday here in london with the teams taking event four. We're going to take a quick break here after event three for the men, but be sure to check out the newest CrossFit Games documentary now in pre-sales on iTunes. Fittest on Earth Next Gen captures the amazing performances and personalities of the 2021 CrossFit Games. Here's a little sample. at the CrossFit Games is everything. If you're gonna make a claim of the fittest on earth, which is a massive claim, you have to make sure that that test is well thought out, well planned. It's not about who's the toughest athlete, it's about who's the fittest. How can we throw this many events at people and still allow them to recover enough to really put the best foot forward? Yes, I believe it's my responsibility to keep raising the bar. If I'm not raising it, then who will? You cannot part-time this. You have to dedicate your life to it. And even that may not be enough. I don't think there's any reason why I can't win the CrossFit Games. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think I could win.
A lot of things were going through my head. After birth, I still remember I could not walk downhill with the stroller. Now all of a sudden, podium was realistic. You've also got this development where you're starting to get these younger athletes. Kids who have been doing CrossFit since they've been in elementary school. Now O'Brien, we saw her stare right in the face of the reigning women's champion and not blink. The young, upcoming, new blood of the sport. It's like if you want a shot at winning the games, this is where we take them. Well, Horvath now pulling even with Toomey. This year, I came here to win. A huge opportunity for me to get some points on him. At that point, I wasn't concerned about my elbow. Like, I just wanted to finish the games. And Andy Thorsutter has it! I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to win this.
One minute. Thirty seconds. Stand by. Three, two. One, lift. Here we have Katarina Isler. Out with her first lift. At 90 kilos. Semi-final event. She narrowly missed out last year with a 67th place in the quarter uh, in the quarterfinals. Three, two, one, lift. Now we have Celia Turnison. With an 82 kilo attempt. This is Celia's first semi-final event. Three, two, one, listen. This is also her first outing at a CrossFit semi-final event. Three, two, one, lift. No. 
Now we have Vanessa Vaughan and Matilda Spenow. Matilda with 95 kilos and Vanessa Wagner with 86 kilos. We go now back to lane number one. Three, two, one, lift. Katarina Isla with an attempt at 94 kilograms. Tomato Nicotini and Hannah Fitzgerald.
Vanessa Parker with 91 kilos. But our first woman to break 100 kilos, Matilda Spano! Three, two, one, lift. We're back over to Katarina Isla.
give a huge round of applause to event three here, one lady. We got a full house here at the Excel London Exhibition Center, London, England. Thanks for joining us, everyone, for day two of the CrossFit Strength and Depth. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson and Biba Mass Daughter. We got the third event for the individuals brought to you by the U.S. Army, and we got a heavy barbell, Mads. We do, and the athletes get three attempts for a max load of three cleans, two front squats, and one jerk or a shoulder to overhead. One minute per lift, four minutes between lifts. We've already seen one heat go already, but the number that they are chasing, courtesy of the fittest woman on earth, Tia Claire Toomey. She, along with Danny Spiegel, Christine Kohlenbrander, and Paulina Harrow, all have the best lift that we have seen through three weeks at 245. For all my kilo friends out there, that's about 111 on the barbell. Mads, your recipes for success presented by Trifecta. Well, in order to be successful, first lift needs to be a lift that you know you can get. The second one is one you hope you can get on the day. And if you get those two, then you open up the door to the one that it's all in. Try to make your mark. The last thing you need to think about is if you can, then power clean. Otherwise, you will be challenged with the jerk later. These are your lane assignments for heat two of three on the women's side. These are the athletes ranked in that kind of 10 to 19 spot on the leaderboard. A few athletes to keep your eye on here. Lane five, Sylvia Izquierdo. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing her. I think that she's got some potential in this. I'm not sure she's gonna come out with the heaviest lift out there, but I think she's gonna do really, really well. She comes in 
ranked 12th overall after two events. Remember, the top five go to the games. The top eight extend their season with spots six, seven, eight, going to the last chance online qualifier. So in 12th overall, Three, still plenty two, of opportunity to move up. Lift. And first up here in heat number two is Evie Hollis on the right side of your screen with 88 kilos. And Julia Lezjowska, 80 kilos on the bar. Julie looking very, very comfortable in that front squat. Evie Hall is on the right side of the screen, looking a little bit uncomfortable on the jerk, though. Those athletes getting the first lift in there, that's all they need. Now they can feel comfortable and start, you know, start challenging themselves. They just know, need to know that they have some scores out there. A good lift for both athletes to open up this round. And you know, Matt, you said you kind of have to know that you can hit this first one, but. You know, if you haven't been in this scenario before, there's actually a decent amount of time between when you get corralled and when you come out to the competition floor. So you do see some athletes shaking off a, a little rust. Three, two, yeah, definitely. And, one, and a lot of these athletes play. that are maybe in this heat aren't super experienced and haven't been to these events before. Maybe they started warming up a little bit early, which typically you do because you want to make sure that you don't miss anything. So there's a lot of things, those things to learn and a lot of things that influence these lifts. Medi Granaron and Maribel Gallardo second in this rotation to lift. Gallardo on the right. Granarin will be on your left. Gallardo's lift is good. 86 kilos, no problem. And with that jerk, Betty Granarin will get a lift on the board. Up next, we have Ella Wilkinson on the right-hand side. Marie Robin, 98 kilos. That looks to be the largest opener of this second heat. Well, so far the heavy and the, so far in the competition, the heaviest lift is 100. So. Robin power cleaning the first couple before switching to a full clean. Wilkinson's lift is good. Wow. And a good save for Marie Robin, opening with 98 kilos. That maybe looked a little more belabored than most athletes in this opening lift, but... But at the same time, she's got a really heavy lift in the books, and now all stress is off. She can just go do her thing. Exactly. She's got 98 kilos on the board. And up next, Emily Lundberg, 90 kilos. 93 here for Aoki Burke. Aoki Burke, yeah. Aoife. Aoife Burke, yeah. Aoife Burke. I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> but you learned and you taught me. It's good. Usually it's the other way around. I'm happy to learn, though. Nice. Nice strong jerk from Aoife Burt. She's in with 93 kilos for her first lift. Let's see how Emily's doing. No problem for Emily Lundberg. Maybe a little short on the footwork there, but able to press it out. Once again, it's nice to be strong. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, I can tell from these guys. I haven't experienced it myself. <laughs> Not at all. I'm just going to take their word for it. Silvia Garcia Esquerdo on the left side of your screen here, and Chiara Salandra on the right. This will be the final pairing of athletes before we reset for round number two. Some nice looking power cleans there from both athletes. This is one of the areas I feel like the competitive CrossFit landscape has made the biggest improvement over the years. A decade ago, you might not see so many athletes moving through these complexes with such proficiency. And it just seems like a, 
a required starter just to even consider yourself for this next level of competition. And I think if, if you talk to any weightlifting coach out there, they're going to take the say they're going to tell you the same thing. What you need in order to get better is time. It is just reps for reps for reps for reps for reps. Obviously, you need to get stronger. That takes time as well. So I don't think it's necessarily a surprise that you know we weren't brilliant to start with. Then also the CrossFit nature of things is that we're always going to try to try to improve. We're going to get better coaches. We're going to get find, get better programming. So. I'm not surprised to see it, but I'm happy to see it. Kicking off this second round of lifting here with Julia Blazjowska and Evie Paulus. Paulus making a five kilo jump up to 93. Blazjowska a four kilo jump with an attempt at 84 kilos total. There you go, Evie Hollis. A good lift from Evie. Yep. Julia, however, missed on the jerk. Evie, a former football player. Started CrossFit at the age of 15. <laughs> it, it, you know, it used to be you were always saying, so what was your sport before you found CrossFit? Not anymore. Now it's like, so when did you find CrossFit? And did you by chance do anything before that, Hope? Three, two, one. Eddie Grenier on 91 kilos on the bar. Maribel Gallardo, six kilos back at 85 for their second lift. Oh, Maribel Gallardo missing out on that on the jerk. Gallardo not able to lock that out. Oh, that wasn't bad at all, but she pushed it out in front of her just a little bit. And a good effort by Medi Granaron, but not quite able to finish that lift. You start to see with some of these second round lifts, these athletes, the time under tension from the minute they start that first clean really starts to widen out and that just adds to the interference and the, the fatigue factor. And it's easy when you start getting tired that you just want to wait a little bit before you throw it up. But you know, if you have that weight on your shoulders, that's still going to cost you. And Marie Robin, 102 on the bar for this second lift. Her first lift was at 98 kilos. The best we've seen through heat one was 100 kilos. If she hits this, she will have the new mark to beat. Ella Wilkinson on the right-hand side, 80 kilos on the bar. That's a good lift. Oh, Marie Robin, that's a strong front squat. Now, I'd like to see her widen her grip just a little bit more before she throws that overhead. Yo, yes! Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> and we have a new... Mark to beat by Marie Robin at 102, 102 kilos for her second lift. Wow. And honestly, that didn't look too much different from her first lift. No, I, th I think it even looked better. Yeah. Emily Lundberg at 95 kilos. Aoife Burke, 97. Burke opting for a four kilo jump. That is good for Burke. Solid at 97 kilos, going two for two so far. Go, 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 girl. Bloomberg taking a long time here before this jerk, and maybe just needed to get her breath and a little energy back, able to lock it out. Similar to the first round, she really took her time when it came to that final she, lift in the complex. Yeah, she did, and she's really, really strong. But I mean, if we, at some point, look at her technique, that, that last leg, she doesn't bend it at all. She kind of extends it. And you see that kind of dance between brute strength and, you know, technique and... Yep. Sylvia oh. Izquierdo at 90 <laughs> kilos. Push pressing that, that's nice.
Kiara Salandra in as well. And in the middle of your screen, 83 kilos for Julia Blasiowska, and she missed that jerk on the last one. Three, Evie two, Hollis has a one. What does she have? 90. It looks like 96, 96 kilos. Yep. Yeah. And Julia dropped down a kilo, so making a slight course correction here after a failed second lift, dropping it down by a kilo in hopes that will be the difference maker. Evie wow. Hollis now. Taking a little extra time in this one minute window to set herself for her third and final lift at 96 kilos. Oh. And unfortunately for Julia, that will not be a good lift as she will settle for 80 kilos from her first attempt. No. Same thing, gets out ahead of her, just out in front of her just a little bit, and there's just no way to save it once you get out there. And that's a tough position, you know. She she put a good effort into that lift, and if it's just slightly out in front, you feel like you're kind of chasing the bar there. But yeah, two, Evie Hollis. One. But she's got to be happy, because, I mean, she got a safety lift first. She got a heavy lift on the other one, on the, on the second lift. I think this was one of those, hey, let's see what happens if. Let's take a swing. And she ends with 93 kilos as her top lift overall. And Medi Graneron. Maribel Gallardo both missed their second lift. Hoping that they'll find a little bit more success here in round number three. Gallardo taking another crack at 85 kilos. Granaron went up to 91 for oh, her nice. second lift, and then now she is back to 89 kilos. No problem. So a slight adjustment in weight, and that's a good lift from Medi Graneron, closing it out strong with 89 kilos on the barbell. Her T-shirt says bonkers, and I've got to agree. <laughs> that was really, really nice, though. Good and lift. The, and this will be the most bonkers lift we have seen thus far. <laughs> 104 kilos waiting for Marie Robin to give her best attempt at it. On the right-hand side, Ella Wilkinson having a go at 83 kilos. Wow, that's that's a dogfight for Marie Robin. And Marie Robin not able to secure that third and final clean, so she will settle for the best lift that we've seen thus far at 102. So a nice consolation prize. For going two for three and still a very legit lift. I mean, 102. Ella Wilkinson is done. We're in the back half of this heat number two now of three for the women. Aoife Burke has hit both of her first two lifts at 93 and 97 kilos respectively. So now having to go at triple digits here with 100 kilos on the bar. And Emily Lundberg at 97 kilos, but. So a little more conservative jump from Emily. Just two kilos up from her second attempt. I think that's wise. Nice. One jerk to go for Aoife Burke. Oh, and she is not able to lock that out. And even though she re-racked it, there is a rule that you cannot reload the jerk there. So 97 kilos is the top lift for Aoife Burke out of CrossFit Shapesmiths. That was Three, a good attempt, though. She was very good. One, three. Emily Lund by not able to. She, well, that was the thing, that little dancer you were talking about between technique and power. And she would have had to go just a little bit deeper, even if she was going to go for that lockout. And she was able to kind of muscle through it in the earlier rounds, not able to quite press that out for the final lift. And she will finish with 95 kilos. Sylvia Isquiero with 93 kilos on the bar. She's she looks good, really strong. Yeah, she's had great power clean technique through the first two lifts. She got one in at 87 and 90 kilos just before this. Oh. 
It's the shoulder to overhead that where she got a little bit of work to do, but I mean, the power cleans were great. The front squats were great. But Marie Robin, 102 kilos. Congratulations. An impressive lift from the athlete out of CrossFit Rue de Liu. Marie Robin only needed two lifts to set the new mark to beat. Opens with 98 kilos, finishes with 102. So here's the lift at 102 kilos for Marie Robin. Just strong. You see her knees buckle a little bit, and then they drive back out again, taking her time. I mean, it's just it's so strong. So then she went on to, to 104 kilos, and you could tell from the beginning that this was going to be hard. What was really hard was that just the time that she spent in between. She got one clean and then just kind of hung out really for quite some time at her hip, and then just not able to get enough height on the bar and shoot her elbows forward. But yeah, still, she got 102 kilos, which is the heaviest so far we've seen in this competition. And her reward for an aggressive start is she will have the mark to beat going into this third and final heat of women. One more heat to go for the women here in event number three. The top overall placements after day number one will lift when we return. Nice look there at Big Ben. All fresh and clean after the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. As we return here for day number two of action at the CrossFit Strength and Depth. Tommy Marquez joined at the desk by Mads Jacobson. These are your overall standings after two events coming into today. We have a three-way tie for points at the top, but Emma McQuaid gets the nod via tiebreaker. Samantha Briggs, Sol Seeger, the daughter, the last two athletes above the top five cut line, Amy Kringle holding on to the third and final last chance spot. And that's our event description for the Barbell Complex presented by the U.S. Army. Well, it is three attempts for max load of three cleans, two front squats, one jerk, shoulder to overhead, one minute per lift, four minutes between lifts. And so far, the top lift overall comes from heat number two and Marie Robin with a lift of 102 kilos, and that was her second lift, so uh, an aggressive start for her gives her the best lift we've seen thus far. Yeah, she really throws the gauntlet for everybody else walking onto the floor right now. <laughs> a strong performance from Robin. And looking at this complex, Mads, your recipes for success delivered by Trifecta. Well, I think it's twofold. First of all, you need to know 
start out with a weight that you know you're going to be able to make, then a weight that you hope you're going to be able to make on the day, following up with, well, just a haymaker, because, hey, here we go if you've gotten the first two ones. And the other one is power clean if you can, because it will serve you well when you get to the jerk. These are your laner assignments for this top women's heat and top overall athletes coming into this event. And if there's an athlete on the floor that we might expect to maybe set the time and the new mark to beat, excuse me, it'd be Taylor Howe. Three, Taylor Howe, I'm going to keep two, my eye on her. She's one, uh, incredibly strong and has great technique as well, so this is going to be interesting. Now a competitive weightlifter before switching course to focus on CrossFit. She's competed at the national level and international level representing Wales. And on the right side of your screen, Katrin Tanya Davis did 90 kilos to start with for her. And look at how she did a almost like a split clean to start. A nice and easy power clean here. Looks like she's really just greasing the groove to try and maybe throw up some bigger weights in these second and third attempts. Yeah, I think she's, she's playing really, really smart, making sure that she has a, has a good lift in the books before she kind of starts challenging. And Katrin Tanya, that's a good lift. Good start for Katrin David's daughter, who is in unfamiliar territory outside of a qualifying spot, outside of a last Three, chance qualifier two, spot. So one, she might need lift. to uh, take a couple chances here on day number two. She's going to have to just throw everything she's got at it to put herself back in contention. Amy Kringle, left side of your screen. Elisa Fuliano on your on the right side of your screen. Amy Kringle, who got such a great start yesterday, opened up with an event win. Elisa Fuliano had a strong finish in event two to close out day one. Amy Kringle, no problem. There it is. Liano looking strong in the front squat. Oh, nice. And that's a good lift for her. Three, so up three, next, two, we have Sol uh, Sigurd's daughter and Nicole here. So Nicole, kind of one of these surprise stories here of this weekend hanging around in contention after day number one. Well, she definitely is, uh, and I think I'm surprised to see her. I, I'm so, I was surprised to see her, I'm happily so, but surprised to see her here, and it's going to be interesting to see what she does now. And so let's see what that did. I mean, look at that, 95 kilos like it's nobody's business. And here, a full-time police officer says that she's basically just doing this for fun. <laughs> CrossFit's kind of a hobby for her. And given her demand, her workload at at her job as a police officer, doesn't really get to train full time. Well, she's really good at her hobby. That's uh, there's no doubt about that. Samantha breaks. Crowd going wild. Starts out with 65 kilos. And really, this is going to be damage control for breaks. Three, two, one. Luria Helgadotter in the right side of your screen in lane nine with 86 kilos on the barbell. Despite routinely being one of the lighter athletes in the field, Thuri has always managed to do well in the lifting events. Great technique. She's represented Iceland at the World Weightlifting Championships. So no stranger to some of these complexes. And I think it's a, that's a great thing to kind of carry with you from this when you look at Thuri right here. She's technically incredibly sound. She's obviously strong, but just from being one of the smaller athletes, not necessarily a bad thing that, that eliminates, you, eliminates you from from being able to do well under a lo under load. You just need to be technically better. And she's not just one of the smaller athletes. For her frame, she's a little bit longer through the yep. arms. And she has said that's something that has required her to work on Three, that technique two, steadily throughout one, her career. Live. These are your top two athletes coming into today. Jacqueline Dahlstrom, 88 kilos on the bar. And Emma McQuaid opening with 92 with an easy power clean. Wow, Emma. <laughs> oh, Emma. 
I look so strong. Beautiful technique by Jacqueline Dahlstrom. And by Emma McQuaid. So both athletes, relatively speaking, taking their time with that first complex, making sure they get a good lift on the board as we are going to reset now for the second round of lifts. And Catherine David's daughter makes a two kilo jump, or sorry, three kilo jump up to 93. And Taylor Howe, it looks like she has 94 kilos on the bar. and really fighting for each one of those clean reps using a double bounce out of the bottom of the, of the receiving position there. Interesting that Taylor Hall may be a conservative jump here, seeing as how easily she can power clean this barbell. And the same thing with, her squat, with Taylor Howe's squat. <laughs> David's daughter gets a good lift in at 93 kilos. Taylor Howe good at 94. Really the situation for David's daughter and even for most of the Icelandic daughters, as long as they can get to the jerk portion, they're so strong overhead because of the gymnastics background. It really comes down to the front squat and the clean. And, it, and I think that's, as, as crossfitters, that's one of the things you often find is that the shoulder to overhead is less of a problem than, than the squats. Whereas if you hang out in weightlifting circuits, that's usually the other way around. More often than not, as long as the weightlifters can stand it up, they just, they really got to focus around the clean because their legs are so strong. It's almost yep. the other way around sometimes for the crossfitters for sure. Amy Kringle is good at 88 kilos. Elisa Fuliano at 96 kilos. Nice. It's good here by Fuliano. And that is great good. drive. That is good for Fuliano, a full-time UX designer, Three, user experience. Two, one, for those of us not in the tech industry, full-time digital designer, not an athlete by profession, looking pretty good so far. So Sola at 100 kilos right now. Oh, that's solid. Nicole here with 86 on the bar. Oh, just beautiful. Picturesque technique from Sola. And I think that's one of the reasons why, as we watch Nicole here lock it out with another strong lift in her second round, that's one of the reasons why that I think there's been some excitement around Sola as the, one of the next daughters to break through. Good technique on the lifts. Improving in the other areas like we saw in the long event to start yesterday. The interesting decision here, Three, Sam two, Briggs opting one, not to lift. lift. And I can only imagine that she's got something where she's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blow this up. I needed a result on the board. I'm gonna save myself for the rest of the competition. Guri Helgadotter will be the only athlete to lift in this round now at 91 kilos. As she gets a lift in at 91 kilos. And given that she's usually around like 65 kilos or so as a lifter, she's competed even lighter than that. Three, I mean, we're approaching two, one and a half times four. body weight for her, and that's <laughs> yeah. certainly impressive. Pound for pound, that's amazing. It's the technique as well, just the patience on the way up to get the max height on the bar. And really enjoy seeing that. Jacqueline Dahlstrom, second attempt, 94 kilos. Yep, 95 for Emma McQuaid. So we're seeing a little bit of that strategy here with McQuaid opting to go a kilo ahead of Dahlstrom. They're tied overall in points. Yeah. 
Jacqueline Dahlstrom, great shoulder overhead. Dahlstrom strong with that 94 kilo lift. You see Sam Briggs cheering on oh. her friend and training partner, Emma McQuay. That's good at 95 pounds. And Sam Briggs, we didn't get to talk about that earlier, opting not to lift. It's possible, Matt, that maybe she knows that she's probably going to end up in last anyways. She just didn't want to bomb out of this lift and keep herself in the competition and would rather save herself for the remainder of the way. Absolutely. Just, um, we need to point out it's kilos. So 95 kilos. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Because <laughs> that, if that was 95 pounds, or, then she would probably be having an easier time. My apologies. No, but that's okay. But no, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that's smart by Sam. She knows that, you know, she, she needs to be at her best performance later, so. 95 kilos on the bar for Katrin David's daughter. Just not able to get it up. And relatively speaking, 93 kilos for her is a good lift. Yeah. She's not one of the most competitive when it comes to a single lift, but when you start to add reps in, maybe drop the percentage down to 90, 85%, that's where Katrin typically is able to hold court. Yep. And Taylor Howe, I'm, I'm surprised that she's not going heavier, considering how easy it's looked so far. She's had zero problems at 91 and 94 kilos, respectively. And honestly, that looked easy, so maybe try to save some in the tank for the rest of the way. That It's the only explanation I can come up with. I think there's just a lot of untapped potential right there. She is so strong. And, you know, maybe that's part of it. She's focused on the other areas of her game, and yeah. so... She's willing to let a few things go here or there. Amy Kringle, 91 kilos on the bar. Behind her, Elisa Fuliano, 98 kilos. Fuliano unable to get through the clean portion, so she will settle with a top lift of 96. Amy Kringle wrapping up her event at 91. And here, is the play for Sola Sigurdardottir. One kilo ahead of the top lift that we've seen thus far at 103 kilos. Three, two, she knows one, what the, the best lift, lift coming in was. She made her jumps accordingly, and now 103 on the bar for the potential event win. Oh. You can hear the crowd in the background. <laughs> yeah. Crowd just kind of go, oh. Once that first power clean went up. here. Final attempt at 88 kilos on the left-hand side of your screen. Yes! And that is huge <laughs> for Sola Sigurdardottir. daughter. 103 for her final lift. Nicole here digging deep for that jerk. And she looks pretty happy as well. She goes, I believe, three for three to 88 kilos. That's going to boost her confidence a little bit, but Sola Sigurdardottir, daughter, 103 kilos, plays it perfectly, and it's looking like she might walk away with an event win here. I mean, when she, when she threw that first power cleanup, <laughs> I, I had to look at the bar and kind of do the math, and yeah, that was right. For Sola, that could be a huge result because she was fifth overall coming into this event. Yeah, and Sam Briggs sat out her third and second lift. Thuri Hegel, daughter, 94 on the bar. Didn't quite see it because it was off screen, but Thuri normally very composed, a little bit quiet, really fired up, shouting at herself to get herself pumped Ooh. up for this lift. Valiant effort by Helga Dodder, but just not able to stand up that second front squat. She will finish with a best lift of 91 kilos. You see your standings heading into this event as Emma McQuaid and Jacqueline Dahlstrom approach their final barbell. You can see Briggs and Sigurd Dodder right there at four and five. So 97 kilos both for Jacqueline Dahlstrom and for Emma McQuaid. And in the previous round, McQuaid went up an extra kilo to stay ahead of Dahlstrom, but a little jockeying back and forth. Dahlstrom makes the three kilo jump, only two kilo jump for McQuaid, and they could end up with a tie here at 97. Oh, nice.
face by Dahlström. And by Emma McQuaid. And three for three, and look at that. <laughs> Athletes pointing at each other. They know they're in a points race. They're going bar for bar. Game recognized game, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. I think. But this is how you want to see Emma McQuaid. I mean, happy. Just fired Relaxed. up. We see Sam Briggs opting out of her second and third lift, content with hanging out and cheering on her friends. Ah, ah. <laughs> and that's why Sam Briggs is one of the best ambassadors of the sport, ah. CrossFit Games champion, Spirit of the Games winner, all around just one of the good humans ah. in this community. Yeah. She looks as focused on other people's lifts as she is on her own. That's why she was one of the fan favorites. She's just as excited for Amber McQuaid and love to see that camaraderie amongst the top athletes, even though they're fighting for spots on the leaderboard. But your event win, an impressive showing from Sola Sigurd, daughter. She had the advantage of coming in in this final heat, knowing what, what, what that mark was and what she needed to take down. And she played it perfectly, 95 kilos to start. Yeah. And just have a look at the lifts as well. I mean, she's really composed. This is, a, this is a heavy lift. She's just really composed, taking her time. And then that drive. That drive was beautiful. You can see the excitement from Sola. An event win in 100 points. And she's standing by with Viva Mascar. Solvay, my girl. Um, how have you been preparing for an, an event like this? Um, I've done it twice in training. I have, like, I wanted to, like, start a little bit aggressive. I had 96 in my head, but I went 95 just because of the fucking nerves. Um, but that went okay. When I got 100, I was like, okay, you can take some chance now. I've gotten 100 once in training, but it, like, it's not given. And yeah, I just wanted to see, like, I wanted to save the last lift for, like, uh, a big one. Oh, yeah. You just told me you didn't even know that uh, the lift you had to beat was 102. So how does it feel that you were so close? Yes, yeah, so I had no idea what, like, I needed to beat. But now I'm relieved. I had 105 in my head, but I was like, that's going to be very touch and go. I felt like 103 could, I could save. So I'm extremely happy as an event been in the semi-final. I'm, I'm stoked. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you, Biba. And apparently she didn't know what the mark to beat was, but it doesn't matter. Sola Sigurd, her daughter, walks away with an event win. The women are done. We're going to reset for team event four. We're going to have some live coverage when we return for more from day two of Strength and Depth. The 2022 CrossFit Semifinals. The 2022 CrossFit Semifinals are presented by Arosti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. By Rogue, Don't Weaken. By Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. By Guaranteed Rate, the official mortgage company of the Noble CrossFit Games. And by GoWatt the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows, no bull. We're helping our members not only with their fitness one hour of the day, but we want them to improve 24 hours a day, every day of the year. We're helping with nutrition, we're helping with their sleep, their recovery. I take Thorn every day as a multivitamin, a pre-workout, and then before I go to bed. After using Thorn products, I feel a lot more powerful in my workouts, and then I can also focus better not only in the gym, but outside of the gym as well. 
Dear coach, thank you. Thank you for always being there. For running a class at 5.30 in the morning so I can get home before my kids wake up. For making sure I build on my strengths and work on my weaknesses. For being a compass that guides me toward a better version of myself. For constantly putting the needs of others before your own. For helping me lose 100 pounds last year. For helping me realize that asthma can't stop me from achieving my goals. For reaffirming that life doesn't head down till after the age of 40. For making the impossible possible. For being an amazing coach, friend, and mentor. Thank you. Thank you for always being there. Hi everybody and welcome. We're going to first begin by talking about the definition of CrossFit. All right guys, go ahead and sit back and down. Fight for that position. Push your knees apart from each other, just like that. Excellent job. This is a fitness that is considered broad, general, and inclusive. What's the biggest impact I can have on this athlete right here in this second?
One minute. Thirty seconds. Stand by. Workout will be they will complete their 21 grant overheads and 30 synchro burpees. Then they will split, and one male and female pair will do 50 synchro toes to bar. They will then come back on the worm and do 20 worm grant overhead. Then they will split, and pair two male and female will do 50 synchro toes to bar, 30 synchro burpees, and the full team will do. 20 worm ground to overhead. minute time cap on this workout these teams are gonna have to go some to make it all the way through
In lane eight, CrossFit Zoom now here in their toes to Mars. taking that early lead after the first male and female pair. motion training in lane number one. Lane number four, currently sitting 13th in the leaderboard with 150 points. That is just 70 points behind a place to the games. Easily made up in three events.
six, CrossFit Butcher Slab BL back first. Coming out of nowhere off the toes to bar. Really, really closely followed by lanes nine and seven. Airs CrossFit and CrossFit 2605 Team Trinity Fuego. CrossFit 2 making their way on their last pair to do the new toes to bar.
brings us to the end of heat number one of event four for the elite teams Purgatorio. Coverage continues here on day number two of CrossFit Strength and Depth. Team event four is getting underway. We've already had one heat go, and it's time to break out the worm. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson. We have a mass daughter, the third member of our team, will be along shortly. And these are your standings through three events. Oslo Navy Blue continuing to stay perfect there. But the race has started to thicken a little bit for that fifth and final spot. Nordic Original 80-20 in a tie for points, and they are just five points ahead of CrossFit Throndheim in six. Team event four presented by Noble. If you read Dante's Divine Comedy, you know Purgatorio. Well, I don't know that, but I know I know what this is. It's going to be 20 worm ground to overhead, followed by 30 synchro burpees, then 50 synchro toes to bar, male-female pairing. Then back to 20 worm to ground or worm ground to overhead, then 50 synchro toes to bars, and then 30 synchro burpees before the 20 ground worm ground to overhead. That's hard to say with an 18 minute time cap. Your recipes for success delivered by Trifecta. There are three things for this. First is communication on the worm, making sure that everybody is aligned on what they need to do on every single rep. After that, it's teamwork on the burpees, making sure you don't get a no rep because somebody gets up too soon. The last one is fast breaks on the toes to bar. Your lane assignments for this final heat of teams, your top 10 teams overall. And like we said, the race for the fifth spot is heating up here as we close out day number two. And this event could set some teams up nicely going into the final day. We are off and running as the teams will kick things off by doing some work. 
on that worm for the first time this weekend in lane number nine. That's CrossFit 8020. They are holding on to the fifth and final spot. Well, they are, and it's five points is, is nothing at all. So I, I think the only ones who can feel pretty comfortable with where they're at right now, but, sh but shouldn't relax in any way, shape, or form, that is Oslo. Everybody else is virtually still being chased by each other. It's, it's still just a fight. And here's Trondheim. And the crew from Norway is in sixth place overall. After three events, the team of Ingrid Thondel, Wurtherm and Mo, Eric Vadal, and Lars Rudi. And they've been looking good as well. I mean, they did great on the lifting event a little bit earlier also. So I think they look they look really good, and then uh, they should have a lot of confidence coming in here. And you can see the teamwork as well on the on the worm. You can tell they've done this before. You know, love it or hate it, the worm is kind of the quintessential team implement in this competition. And you expect someone like CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue to show their proficiency and really shine here as well. Well, I mean, first of all, Oslo Blue, Oslo Navy, Navy Blue, they're great athletes on an individual plane, but they've had an opportunity to work out together as a team, more or less professionally now, for 12 months. And what you see right now is exactly what happens when you get fit athletes who then figure out how everybody else works in a team. Communication-wise, movement patterns, they probably don't have to say that much. Everybody knows what everybody else is up to. Center of your screen, lane number five, Oslo Navy Blue, first to start moving the worm, and then over on lane number seven, that's CrossFit Throndheim there. Countrymen and women from Norway in second, as the teams will now progress to 30 synchro burpees, and it should be noted that a two-foot takeoff is not required. You exactly. can jump over or step over, so clearly the, the team's opting for the less invasive version with the step over. And I think I think that's smart to be honest. I mean there's no reason to start jumping if you don't have to. Because this is it's one of these things where burpees, I don't know how many times we've seen it in competition where you start jumping, pulse goes up, people get a little bit unfocused and next thing you know people are getting off the ground before everybody's down, then they get called back. Two or three of those, they get in trouble. The time to be from the first heat set by CrossFit Butcher's Lab, BL, 1558. They won going away by nearly 30 seconds over CrossFit 2605. As all the teams now are working through their 30 synchro burpees. As we see CrossFit Widom just now getting to that section and be looking for hands in the air to see which team will send their first Male, female pair back for 50 synchro toes to bar. That is a sizable chunk of toes to bar. It, it is, and, and nobody's going to go unbroken on that. So this is why it's really important that you have those breaks and that they're fast breaks. As we get a look at CrossFit Katla, crew from Reykjavik, Iceland, lane number one. And Lane seven, CrossFit Throndheim, hoping to punch their way up into the top five. And right now, they are keeping pace with Oslo Navy Blue. Hand in the air for Oslo Navy Blue. They send their first female male pair back. Same with Throndheim. Literally side by side. For Oslo, the crew of Lena Richter and Elvin Dahlringard. First to the toes to bar. Trondheim looking really, really good. Notice that none of the athletes actually have to look at the other athlete. They're still synced, and they're not the same length. So that's a, that's a good a good sign of have them having been able to spend a lot of time together. This kind of goes back to some of those nonverbal cues and time spent practicing these movements in the gym. But you know they're going to have a set break. They don't have to look to make sure that they're coming down at the right time. Easy to sync up here on the on the toes to bar. Fairly similar techniques too. Yeah, no, this looks this looks really really good. And if you're and if you're Throndheim, maybe you start to take a chance here in this final event of the day to hopefully set yourself up in a good position going into Sunday. As we see the remaining members of these teams get a nice little break. It's not very often you get to rest <laughs> in competition, but I guess you'll take it when you can get it. Definitely, definitely. 
I think it's an interesting format, though, where you get that. You kind of need to... You start dividing the team just a little bit to find out, are there any weak spots? Is there anything that anybody who's being carried by the rest of the team? And this is the team that Trondheim is trying to chase. That is CrossFit 80-20. And the pairing of Jim Neal. I believe that's Kerry Hewitt. Hewitt, one of the athletes that cleared the snatch ladder earlier, earlier this morning. And you can see Nordic Original just to the right of Trondheim with Alexander Lebrou and Michaela Norman. They're also tied in points with that fifth place position. So Exactly. They're right on the bubble as well. They need to keep an eye on Trondheim as well. They're on either side, the two teams that they are in a race with. So now, so, yeah, so Oslo came back just a little bit ahead of Trondheim, but it's still the same though. And Oslo making their way through the next section of 20 warm ground to overhead. They will get through these and they will flip flop their male female pairing and send the other pair back to the rig for toes to bar. They just got to do these and then, uh, yeah. And it's Oslo Navy Blue in one, Throndheim in two, and then the battle for third is between CrossFit Mayflower and lane number three, the bottom center of your screen, the male athletes with black shirts and black shorts. And on towards the top of your screen, so that's Mayflower there on the left-hand side. I really like the rhythm they have on the on the on the worm. I mean, the most important thing about this is not necessarily what technique you do you have, but that everybody kind of fo follows the same rhythm. And that is Oslo Navy Blue. A few more reps to wrap it up. A couple reps to go. A couple different hands in the air. Oslo is just <laughs> moving as one. And it's interesting because Oslo Navy Blue not opting for touch and go reps on this clean and jerk and still able with their pace to remain ahead of the pack because Throndheim picked up the worm and tried to rip off about four or five touch and go to start. And I typically like seeing that, but as I talked, as I said before, I think the more important thing is that you have the same rhythm. This is the crew from CrossFit Subsborg, Lynn Finstag, Emily Moore Olsen, Tariq Van Nielsen, and Marius Olsen. They have been in a qualifying position pretty much all weekend long, hanging tough, and they were in the battle for third in this heat, moving into this implement, so certainly a team to keep your eye on. As I look at these guys, the Oslo, Oslo again, second, second male-female pair. And just wrap your head around the fact that nobody else has even gotten to the rig yet. They were in a close race with Throndheim for the top spot, and they have separated themselves here after that second set of worm clean and jerks. CrossFit Mayflower now moving the the, uh, the worm forward, sending their second pair back to the rig, and that's Helena Collins. Now Trondheim moving the rig or their worm forward as well. All going to be joining Oslo back here on the rig. So CrossFit Mayflower, the pair of Helena Collins and Benjamin Wadham, will move, make their way back to the rig. They have moved into second place overall. Mayflower making a bit of a move here in this final event. They are just 25 points back of 80-20 in seventh overall coming into this event. So. No surprise to see a little sense of urgency here from the Mayflower squad. Not at all. And now you have Sapsport coming back as well. And that is Throndheim back on the rig as well, just to their left. Pink top. Turquoise pants. That is Lynn Finstag from May. Sorry, Sapsport. So a few of the top teams here battling it out on this second portion of 50 toes to bar for the male-female pairs. And on the left, that is 
Lane number three, CrossFit Mayflower on the right. And CrossFit Trondheim on the right. Yep, that is the race for second right now. As Oslo Navy Blue <laughs> is done. They are so good, it is insane. They will head back to the worm. They will have 30 synchro burpees and 20 worm ground to overhead until they are done. Just over five and a half minutes to go to beat the time set in the first heat by CrossFit Butcher's Lab. 18 minute time cap here for this event. Most of these teams should, shouldn't play a factor. And this is CrossFit 8020 on the right hand side of your screen. They were the, the gatekeeper in fifth place overall. They're in a battle towards the back half of this heat, so they're gonna have to hope to make up some ground here as Louis Pearson and Emma Willis are their second pair on the toes to bar. And look at Oslo, so some the male, male athletes now actually start jumping, or well, one of them anyways, Nicolai Biladol, has started jumping over the worm. I'm not sure if they actually need that kind of urgency, but at the same time, this may be how they practiced it at home. And Mayflower is done. They are heading back to the worm and CrossFit Throndheim over in seven. Lane seven is actually past them. Just a few seconds ahead, this battle for second starting to heat up as we've seen Throndheim in seven and CrossFit Mayflower in lane three trade back and forth for that second overall place in this heat. This is so efficient. This is, this is exactly what you want to see. That little jump, if you don't have to do it, it just makes it so much easier to be synchronized over that worm. CrossFit Sarpsborg is back to the worm as well. So your top three in this heat, it goes Oslo Navy Blue, CrossFit Throndheim. A few reps back is CrossFit Mayflower, and then fourth place, CrossFit Sarpsborg. Just under six minutes left to go in the cap, and Oslo Navy Blue is done with their burpees. 20 worm ground to overhead is all that stands between them and a potential fourth straight event win. And considering how they've moved on the worm earlier, I can't imagine who would be able to catch up with them. So now we have, that's Aylesbury coming back to the worm as well. And we've got in lane number one, we've got CrossFit Katla coming back. So on the right side of your screen, with the maroon shirts, that's CrossFit Throndheim. They were second to the worm. And then in lane three, the bottom left, male athletes with both black shirts, that is CrossFit Mayfly, where they were a few reps behind in this race for second. And if you look at the bottom or the right side of your screen, that's the CrossFit Nordic original team. Now, they were in a, in a, in the, in, in a, a fourth position. They're the second last team to come back to the burpees. This is not going to serve them well. So they're going to need to pick up the pace a little bit here if they're hoping to maybe keep themselves at least in the running for a top five spot heading into the final day. As Oslo Navy Blue, two and a half minutes to go for the time to beat set by Butcher's Lab at 15.58 and showing no signs of slowing down from Oslo Navy Blue. Just really, really good. It's, it's just nice to see. They're, they're on their last five reps, so they're going to be well ahead of that time set by CrossFit or by uh, Butcher's Lab. Three reps remain for Oslo Navy Blue. Just like the three events before it, it has been all gas, no brakes for the team from Oslo Navy Blue. One more rep to go, and they make it a perfect four for four. <laughs> and 400 points for the top team through to day number two. And now the question is who will make the push into second? Three different teams, four teams on the worm now, and this is CrossFit Throndheim in the maroon shirt in a close race for second, just to their left, CrossFit Sarkport. They were the fourth team to the worm, but now we're starting to see some teams slow a little bit. 
Well, there are some teams, but I mean, the Nordic original team has just been really, really, really slow. So I think that's where you're going to find it. And soon we're going to have the points from the Butchers team as well starting to play in. Over in lane number three, CrossFit Mayflower was about two reps behind heading into the burpee section. They were close with Throndheim on this last warm section. Looking for a hand in the air at this point. Just under three minutes to go to the 18 minute time cap. Hand in the air for Trondheim. This is Mayflower, center of your, center left of your screen. Hand in the air, not yet, but looks like CrossFit Throndheim getting close to the finish now. It's a lot. So a lot of teams right now with the judges' ears in the, in the air. Judges' and in hands the air are in the air. Time. One more rep to go. And Norway will claim the top <laughs> two spots in this event. Just barely ahead, a second or so ahead of CrossFit Butcher's Lab, unofficially around 15.57. And now, Mayflower, center right of your screen. Sorry, Sarpsborg is in for the, looks like the fourth fastest time because Butcher's Lab's time from the previous heat will factor in. And that's now, Aylesbury. No, it's not. That is not. That's Mayflower. Is in. So times from the earlier heats starting to factor in. About a minute and a half left to go to the cap. And In lane nine, CrossFit 80-20. Left side of your screen in damage control at this point. In lane 10, CrossFit with him made a charge on this back half. Just a couple of reps to go as well. In lane number two, North Engine CrossFit on their last two reps. As you can see, the final few teams out on the competition floor, and that's gonna do it for 80-20. They cross just ahead at the bottom of your screen, North Engine CrossFit. Last five reps here in lane number one as well for CrossFit Katla. About 30 seconds to go to the cap, and at this point, these teams are emptying the tank to try and snatch as many points as possible going into the final day. This is CrossFit Katla. Oh. Last 10 seconds, one more. And CrossFit Katla will get across with a few seconds to spare just before the time cap. And that is gonna do it for the top teams in this final event of day number two. And for the fourth time in a row, your winner, Oslo Navy Blue. So let's have a look at what, what happened. And what happened was that CrossFit Oslo made it onto the floor and just put on an absolute clinic. They were synchronized on their movements on the worm. They were synchronized on the burpees. On the toes to bars, it was fast, fast breaks, making sure they got good chunks. So the lead just kept on growing and growing and growing. And once they got to the last uh, worm shoulder, ground to, ground to overhead on the worm, it was, a, it was virtually a clinic. Nobody else was even close, and they claim another victory. Oslo Navy Blue holding court, staying perfect through two days of competition. Everything going as expected for the reigning silver medalists at the CrossFit Games. You see the crew of Lena <laughs> Richter, Ingrid Hodenemir, and so they're Elvin gonna... Dobringard and Nikolai Bilodeau say, you know, we got it. We've got a little left in the tank. We'll, we'll be nice and carry our worms back as oh, well. That's nice. Actually, we'll sprint our worm back. <laughs> Just got too much energy that way. No, you got You got to really enjoy that. But the team, what I what I really what I really enjoy about it is the 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 way that they are working as a team with everything. No communication needed. They just know how everybody else is going to move. That's going to do it for teams here on day number two. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, light coverage as the men will tackle event four.
20 seconds. Stand by. And we're off into heat number one. These athletes will compete, complete 50 kettlebell deadlifts, a 150 foot handstand walk, 50 box jump overs, 75 toes to bar. Then they will move their way back towards the finish line and go 50 box jump overs. 150 foot handstand walk and finish with 50 kettlebell deadlifts. There is a 16 minute time cap on this workout. Taking the early lead in lane three, Dimitris Fidou. Closely followed by Bartek Lipka. Dimitri Svitu with the first turnaround. Christoph Omar the first on the way back. Bartek Lipka close behind. Most of our athletes will go unbroken on these handstand walks. But first, to the box overs. Christoph Horvath! <laughs> Closely followed by Bartek Lipka and Dimitris Fitu. Daniel Camacho starting to pick up the pace now. Up here in lane number seven. Jan Matiaska also to the box jump overs. Sammy Wright on the box jump overs now. Coming to the end of the 50 box jump overs, Christoph Horvath moving forward to 75 toes to bar.
In five. Sorry, in seven. Daniel Camacho making his way out now onto the toast of bar. Bartek Livkan, Dimitri Svitu trying to catch up to Daniel Camacho and Christoph Horvath. Jan Arn Finkenberg and Jan Matiaska on the bar now. We are seven minutes through the time cap now. Still chipping away at the 75 toes to bar. Has anyone or can anyone catch Christoph Horvath at these? Five remaining for Christoph Horvath, but out on to the box jump overs now. Daniel Camacho! That is some speedy toaster ball right there. Crystal Bullard making his way out now. Daniel Camacho making up time on those toes to bar. And still keeping the pace on the box jump overs. Dimitri Svitu now out onto the box jump overs, having finished his 75 toes to bar. We are nine minutes through the workout of a 16 minute time cap. This workout is for time. Jan Matiaska on the box jump overs now. Along with Bartek Lipka and Sammy Wright is out now. And 
Oh gosh, he's neck and neck between Christoph Horvath and Daniel Camacho. Christoph Horvath kicking up for the second of his handstand walk lengths. Kicking up for the last of his handstand wall lengths. Christoph Horner, we are 11 minutes through. Hot on his heels, Daniel Camacho. Christoph Horner, first to take his place at the kettlebells. Christoph Ormer for his first 10 kettlebell deadlifts. For his second set of 10. Hard as heels, Daniel Camacho. Camacho with 10 reps to go. And Daniel Camacho over the finish line to take second in the heat. Just under two and a half minutes left to complete this workout. <laughs> Dimitris Vitu out into the deadlifts. He's completed 20. Sammy right out of the deadlifts now. Jan Matiaska. Sammy right. Giving it everything he's got now. 90 seconds. One minute left! <laughs> 40 seconds! 
seconds to go. In heat number one, 10 reps left for, you, for Jan Matiaska. Three left for V2, Matiaska over the finish line with 20 seconds to go. Dimitris V2 with just a few laps left. 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one, time. <laughs> Make some noise for the athlete of heat, number one. continues here on day two of CrossFit Strength and Depth inside the Excel London Arena as the second heat of men gets ready for event number four. Tommy Marquez joined by Mads Jacobson. And earlier today, we saw a huge lift from Andre Hude moving himself up the leaderboard in contention heading here into the back half of the day. So he's in seventh now after that huge lift. So that's seventh places up the leaderboard in one event. Just show, We talked about moving it, didn't we? We did, and 100 points certainly helps. And these are your standings after three events. Willie George still holds on to the overall lead. The point spread between second and fifth is only 28 points, but 12 points back of fifth, Guillaume Briant is Yonikoski, Hude, Simmons, a couple of vets there holding on to the last chance qualifier, and Fossa just outside in ninth. The fourth event of this weekend, going to close out day number two, presented by Noble Curiosity Shop. Well, it is 50 kettlebell deadlifts, followed by 150 foot handstand walk, then 50 box jump overs, 75 toes to bar, 50 box jump overs, 
150-foot handstand walk, then 50 kettlebell deadlifts to end it off with. Male weight is going to be 32 kilo or 40 kilos on each uh, kettlebell, and the height is 24 inches. There's a 16-minute 16, 16 time cap. We saw a good amount of athletes pour through this event, and here is your heat list for heat number two. Uday making the charge. He is going to be in lane number seven, and Reggie Fossa, who is just outside the bubble on the last chance, in lane four. Two is underway here in event for the Curiosity Shop. As these athletes will start chipping away at the workload here. 50 kettlebell deadlifts. Nice little down and back chipper to close out day number two. Mads, for this event, your recipes for success delivered by Trifecta. Well, I think there are two things. One of the first of all is save some uh, for the way back. That's when you want to make your move coming back, probably even on the kettlebell, on the kettlebell deadlift. We talked to Khan Potter, he said that's exactly what he would do. So I think that's the first one. The second one is that the handstand walk is a trap. Whether you're very good or very or not as comfortable with the handstand walk, it is a trap. If you're good and you pop up too fast, you risk missing out and being called back and the distance you get called back will get you in trouble. And that is the first break from Andre Uday. He makes it through the first two transitions, carrying those kettlebells. One quick break, and you know, he's an athlete after that last event. First place finish in the complex has helped his cause for a games ticket. Reggie Fossa getting a little hometown love. One of a handful of UK athletes here that the crowd has really rallied behind in ninth overall. So he's the first one to kick into the hands into the handstand walk and a little bit further down you have Andre Hudia. Now, as we talked about before, Reggie Faza in the past has had has a tendency to come out a little bit hot. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see whether he is timing or pacing himself better now. We were chatting earlier that the, the kind of knock on Faza was that he only knew two speeds on and off, <laughs> and he would just go full send all the time and learned to kind of manage the throttle a little bit. But one of the things he did is he moved even closer. So he actually lives a lot closer to his coach now. So he gets a lot more coaching on a day to day basis. And I think that's exactly what he needed. So far, Reggie Fossa has, has a much improved performance over last year at semifinals. He's currently in second now. Fossa on your screen. He is chasing down Andre Hude, who is the first athlete in this heat to wrap up the handstand walk portion, make his way over to the box jumps. And we mentioned this earlier, Mads, with so many athletes choosing to move closer to their coach or kind of team up in a camp type environment. Andre, I guess a testament to knowing what his strengths are, went the other direction and moved away from everyone. Yeah, and we, we, even, we even talked about this. So who's the perfect coach for, the, for, for, for what athlete or is there a perfect coaching style? The truth is you need to find what works for you. And as we talked to Andre after his lifting event, he said, it just feels better when I'm all by myself. And apparently it works because right now the lead he had before, he, before uh, Reggie Fossa started jumping over the box was 10 reps. And Hude looking comfortable on that box as we take a quick peek at the standings after three events. As you can see, Hude is 14 points back of that cut line. Fasa, just one point back of Simmons for the third and final last chance qualifier spot. It's a good portion of the athletes here on this first set of 50 box jump overs. Something we were talking about with Con Porter just a second ago. With these boxes, you got to be really careful about where you land with your feet. The soft top, make the landing a little treacherous if you're not too careful. Well, definitely, be, definitely. And you also need to be really careful about the speed you're going at. This is just the first portion of this event. This is where you don't want to lose it, but you want to set yourself up for, for a, in a position where you can accel accelerate and go, well, unbroken on the deadlift in the end, but also that you can speed up your handstand walk. And Hude is on to the toes to bar, 75 in total. You see the first and only athlete on the rig. You see Fossa on the left-hand side, still working through his box jumps. See most of the athletes on the box jumps. And one thing I love is anytime you see an athlete succeed with a particular technique, 
it very quickly becomes the standard bearer for the sport. And, it, you know, I'm watching these athletes do the box jumps. And you think back to maybe 2014 and Chris Spieler in the box jump overs and how he stayed low and basically sat at the bottom of his squat. Yeah. Now you see everyone do it. I mean, exactly. I mean, that's who we are as a community. We're not too proud to, to admit that somebody else had to figure it out better than we did. And then immediately we're going to start trying it. Sort of open source fitness, if you will. Yep. As Fossa joins Mude on the rig now as Zach multiple George athletes. Joseph have made their way to the toes bar. As you just mentioned, Zach George making a little bit of a push here off of the box jumps. So Andrew, uh, uh, Andre Hudia actually had 25 reps done already before both Zach George and Reggie Fossa made it onto the toes to bar. Four athletes in total are on the rig. Your leaders right now, Andre Hude followed by Reggie Fossa, Zach George and PD Savage, the next two athletes to the toes to bar as well. And PD Savage is gonna he's gonna look to make or he needs to have a, a good a good result on this event after the uh, lifting event which didn't quite go the way he planned it. As you mentioned, PD Savage flirting with disaster in the lifting event, missed his first two lifts, really had to dig for his jerk on the third one just to keep himself in this competition as Andre Uday is really tearing into these toes to bar. And he and if you look at Andre Hudia right now, he's just really relaxed, and that bodes well because if you take, if you if you go too hard and you and your abdominal musculature gets too taxed from this, jumping over that box another 50 times, that's not going to be a hoop. And Reggie Fossa, hoping that he can improve his standing on the leaderboard. Only 20 points back of fifth, so not only in contention for a last chance spot, but strong performance here could move him into the top five. Seeing how it shakes out. All 10 athletes on the rig now. As those are your leaders, Andre Hude on the right, Reggie Fossa on the left. And Zach George, looking at his watch there, maybe he got some timing based on, you know, rest and what he wants to do to attack these. Either that or he just got a text message. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Zach George, I mean, the first thing he did when he jumped up, he, he looked. Then he had a set, came down, looked again. I, I think he's uh, very aware of how he wants to plan this. And a strong showing from George so far this weekend. T tenth overall after three events, flirting with one of those last chance qualifier spots. And there's a lot of people in this building that would love to see him be able to make it to the games. And Andre Hude is off the toes to bar, back to his second set of 50 box jump overs. And now we're past the turnaround point of this big chipper. And like you said, Matt, your recipe for success, save a little for the back end. Exactly. This is when you want to push, push it a little bit. You want to push the pace. Remember, we have a time by Christoph Horvath of 13.01. So this is when you want to you want to put put it down or you want to go a little bit harder. And Andre Houdia right now, remember, he had 10 box jump overs before Reggie Fassa made it to the box jump overs before. Now Fassa is on there, and Andre Houdia is at 18. So he's extended his lead through the toes to bar. Fassa Houdia, the first two athletes working through their box jump. You know, the advantage of this, these types of chippers sometimes, you get a feel for the movement on your way up. You kind of take some stock, collect some data, and then you can really pour it on on the back end. As we see Zach George and Elliot Ganin both getting to the box around the same time. So those are your top four in the heat. And here is what is waiting for them on the back end. They just got through those 75 toes of bar, working through the box jumps, and they're going to go back the way they came with the handstand walks and the kettlebell deadlifts. And for Andre Hude, I think it's interesting to, interesting to remember that he, he kicked into the handstand walk almost at the same time as Reggie Fossa, slightly, almost nothing, but he was a lot faster on the handstand walk. Reggie Fossa, probably Last. happy to see these. Remember, open workout, 22.1 with all those box jumps. Reggie Fossa, excellent in that event. Time to beat here, 13.01, set from a previous heat by Christoph Horvath. That's back-to-back -back events where heat number two is chasing a, a top mark set by Horvath. And here we go, Andre Houdia now onto his handstand walk. And he 
is first through, he's through the first of three 50 foot sections that he will have to traverse here. And he's still looking really good considering the time that we have from Christoph Horvath. Always makes me happy to see one of the bigger athletes in the field like Houdet move well through the gymnastics as a fellow big guy myself. And, you know, it makes a little sense he's so comfortable, you know, on his hands. We saw in the lift earlier today just how good he was overhead, shoulder strength, shoulder positioning. And it's fun, we usually, we, we often hear from gymnasts, it's like, oh, you can't handstand walk, you've got this weird Scorpio thing. Well, this is about conserving energy. That little kick with the leg creates a rotation that makes it easier to move the hand forward and it doesn't tax your shoulders as much. Right? That's just energy efficient right there. And Houdet is done. He's on to his final set. 50 kettlebell deadlifts. He has just over two and a half minutes to go to try and match Christoph Horvath's time of 13.01. And we were talking with Con Porter, who was standing just behind us here in the booths not too long ago, and he was saying that they tested this event and these final sets of kettlebell deadlifts is really where you got to see him pour it on. He said, you kind of just got to turn the brain off and go. Exactly. Jump into that dark, dark place and just stay there. Depends to stay there. Andre Houdé is still well ahead of the time by set by Christoph Horvath. And we cross the 11 minute mark here in heat number two of event four. 16 minute time cap and your leader on the right hand side of the screen is Andre Houdé, the only athlete on the kettlebell deadlifts. Left side of your screen, the green shorts, that's Reggie Fossa. He is second in the heat right now. He has one more handstand section to go and he will join Houdé on the kettlebells. And houdet has been taking a knee in between every 10 reps. Reps. I want to see him step forward and just do the last 10 reps. No rest, because we still have another. Oh, we still have another heat coming up. Looking for the crowd for the last 10. And the crowd in here has been nothing short of electric, rallying behind these athletes. And Houdet trying to tap into that here for his final few reps. And Andre Houdet backing up his event win in the lift earlier today with a top time through two heats. He's in 11.56. Unofficially. We don't have, I believe, oh, yep, 11.56.71. So the question now is who will wrap this up for second? See Reggie Fossa on the left side of your screen in the dark green shorts. He's in second, followed close behind the back right of your screen there. Zach George in the blue shorts. George in a race with Elliot Ganin through these kettlebell deadlifts. And time to turn the brain off and just go, Mads. Oh, absolutely. Just throw your hip back backwards until that you hit the ground and stand all the way up. Reggie Fossa just got a no rep right there. Extend the knees, extend the hip at the top. And just suffer. We are just past the 13 minute mark, and that is the time from Christoph Horvath. So now, Fossa looking at potentially the third place time through two heats. Fossa is done. Another strong performance from Fossa on day number two. He's in the time of 13, 14.55, and now, turn our heads to the third place race in this heat. Zach George, Elliot Ganin, they've been going toe to toe the back half of this chipper. A no rep from Zach George. And you can just see the fatigue pouring in on these two athletes. It looks like P.D. Savage over on lane eight at the same station as George and Ganin. George first to move his dumbbells, but Savage right there with him. Savage first to pick up the dumbbells. Zach George gets a no rep, and now we're in a deadlift race. 
Didi needs this. He's only got a couple of reps, the reps left on the right side of your screen. One more rep to go, and PD Savage beats Zach George and Ganin to the line. George is in next. Now Ganin is in. We had ourselves an exciting little race there at the end. <laughs> gut-wrenching to stand there and look at the guy right next to him and be like, I can't hold on to these things anymore. I'm sorry. There's Marius Pentezon. We've taxed the grip, we've taxed the midline, and now you've got to go all in on these kettlebell deadlifts. Marius Peterson is in. Just under a minute to go with the cap. Four athletes left on the field. Left to right, that's Alexander Pinsole. He's a couple reps left. Simon Mitele in lane two, center of your screen. And then Brian Hernandez, he's on his final few reps as well. Three more reps for Brian Hernandez. Hernandez, That's it. Hernandez is in. He's in just under the cap. Ten seconds to go. And Pintele is in as well, just underneath the cap as we cross the 16-minute mark here. And for back-to-back -back events in heat number two, it is that man right there on your screen leading the charge, Andre Houdet. He's having a great day. All Top together. time through two heats. And man, he was flying. I mean, he got onto the handstand walk just a little bit ahead of Reggie Fossa. When he got to the box jumps, he just took it easy, relaxing. You see him bring his hands in so he doesn't tax the shoulders on the jump. Had crisp breaks on the, uh, and, and fast sets on the toaster bar. So when he got back to the, the handstand walk, he was way ahead of everybody else, which meant that he could break up the deadlifts, could be fast and distinct on the movements. Great day by Andre, uh, Andre Houdia. He's got to really love this. He was tapping into the crowd there to get him through those final few reps. And for an athlete that needed to make a charge on day two, he's certainly been taking care of business. Heat two is done for the men. One more heat to go. We're going to take a, cute, a quick break. But when we return, the final heat of men is going to wrap up day two here at Strength and Depth. here on day number two in CrossFit Strength and Depth. Thanks for joining us, everyone, here in the Excel London Exhibition Center. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson, Viva Mask Daughter, the third member of our team. Your overall standings 
for the men coming into this event. Willie George, your overall leader, but on the bubble, it's Guillaume Briant, 220 point total, and then a host of games veterans right on his heels. We just saw Reggie Fossa in ninth overall put a strong performance, and Andre Hude, he sets the time to beat from earlier heat as well, so a tall task for this individual event four presented by Noble. The old curiosity shop. Well, it is, and today that consists of 50 kettlebell deadlifts, 150 foot handstand walk, 50 box jump overs, 75 toes to bars, 50 box jump overs, 150 foot handstand walk, onto 50 kettlebell deadlifts. The box is 24 inches, the kettlebell kettlebells are 40 kilos each, and there's a 16 minute time cap. And the recipes for success for this chipper delivered by Trifecta. First of all, save some for the way back. You want to preserve energy on the way back because that's when you're really going to put the heat on. And the last one is that hand, the handstand walk is a trap. Need to really be cautious that you don't miss up on that and be called back. These are your lane assignments for the top men's heat to close out day number two for these individuals. And in lane number seven, Jorgis Karavis has made himself quite the little charge here sitting in second after three events. Well, he has, and I think this is going to serve him well. I mean, he's just a ferocious athlete, and getting him back on the kettlebells on the last bat, on the last bit, I think he's going to be able to make some moves. Final heat underway. They will run to the end of the floor and start with the implement that they're going to finish with as well, and that is 50 kettlebell deadlifts, as we saw Willie George get a couple of no reps there to start. Always nice to warm up with these. Loosen up the grip and back a little bit. Yeah. Get those hammies firing. It's not like we have to use them later in this event anyway. No, 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 no. And in lane eight, Guillaume Briant, fifth overall after three events. He is the gatekeeper for the fifth and final spot. But he really needs, he, I mean, he can't relax it at, at all. The, the people, that, as you said, who are chasing him, games veterans who've been on the floor a lot, they know exactly what they go and need to go out here and do. So he needs to go out and really, really get after it. You know, compared to the athletes that maybe are chasing him, Guillaume may be a little bit less experienced. And this feels very much like one of those old regional chippers we would have on Saturday, where you see some of the, the vets start to make a push. Exactly, and remember when Katsun uh, won the games, what was that? That was on the heavy deadlifts with the, with the kettlebells as well. Yep. So it's been around, this kind of setup has been around for a long time, and it, if you've been exposed to it, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Yep, that was pedal to the metal too in 2015. Yep. That's a good memory, Matt. And the first few athletes to the handstand walk. That's Yonikowski in lane number two. And I think it was Looks like Elliot Simmons in lane number six. Next to him, Jorgis Karavis as well. Karavis and Koski are the first athletes to kick back into the handstand walk. And Elliot Simmons just got a no rep on the handstand walk, so we had to reset. He concedes a few meters here on the handstand walk. Two sections down for the top athletes. It's Koski, Ker Karavis, Guillaume Briant, and I believe Alex Katoulis over in lane number nine, yep. starting to pull ahead here on the handstand walk. Just walk so fast. Katoulis has some work to do here because he comes into this event in 12th. He dropped outside of the top 10 on the heels of a 20th place finish in the lift event. And he got two reps in before Guillaume Bryant and uh, Jan Nikoski got after the, the box jump overs. Now, Jan Nikoski currently cir circling through the, the uh, box jump overs just a little bit faster than everybody else. But I mean, if you look at Alex Katulis right here, just in the middle of your screen, just so relaxed. And I think that's important to remember is that this is not where you win the event. This is where you set yourself up for success later. This feels like a good opportunity for Katulis. He's an athlete that's done really well in the open. Some of those high motor events where maybe you know the skills medium, it's not overly complex. You just kind of have to put your head down and grit through it. So.
good opportunity here, and it looks like he's attacking the front half of this chipper. And I think that the, the challenge is if you're good at the open, that means you're good in your own box, in your own weather, with your own friends, with your own judge, with all of that stuff. Too. Interesting to see Alex in this kind of setting as well, where it's on a competition floor, nothing is familiar. As we mentioned in an earlier heat here, all these athletes jumping up onto the box, staying low. You don't need to stand up and extend the hips at the top. A technique we saw almost eight years ago from Chris Spieler during a regional event. Now a widely accepted technique. I remember when he did that and then trying to emulate that in the box. It it was just it was just so counterintuitive to everything that we were used to. It's like stand up on the box, extend your legs, extend your hip, make sure you get the rep, and then suddenly he's like, no, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> And Catullus is the first athlete to the 75 toes to bar. It's worth noting in the previous seat, Andre Hude was the first athlete to the toes to bar. He was also the first athlete done. So carrying his momentum from this turnaround point, that is the 75 toes to bar. It's a good sign for Alex Catullus. And Yonikowski was second on the rig all the way over there on lane number two, the bottom left side of your screen. But the lead for Alex Catullus is only six toaster bars. So keeping it close here between Catullus and Nikoski, and most of this top heat already on the rig here. The only athlete still on the box jumps is Willie George, your overall leader. And I think he struggled a little bit on the hands, or the struggle, but he's not as fast on the handstand walk. And whether that is a technical issue or if it's because of his shoulder, we don't know that. But he, maybe he was just saving himself, as we saw he did yesterday on the muscle-ups as well, just taking it easy. But remember, he came back to win that event. So Catullus on the right side of your screen with the orange socks. He is your leader. The, le the left side of your screen, the right of two athletes. That was Yonikowski. He's in second. Here is your overall leader coming into this event, Willy George. Having a nice bounce back year after missing the 2021 season due to injury. We heard from him earlier this weekend and he said he's he's out to prove that he's still one of the top athletes. He's still capable of a top 10 finish at the games. And I believe him. If he says so, then I believe him. You know, Willie burst onto the scene in, in 2018. One of the top three athletes worldwide in the open goes on to Finished in the top 10 at the games, had his moment out dueling Matt Fraser in the bi couplet events in Madison, and unfortunately just had a couple of seasons marred by some injuries and setbacks, but nice to see him back here in top form at semifinals. And Alex Catullus just past the six minute mark. He is your overall leader. Once he's done with these 75 toes to bar, he will be back to the box, working his way back the way that these athletes came on the front end of this chipper with 50 more box jump overs. 75 reps, a little bit more than we're used to for a single chunk here. Well, it, it, I th it, it definitely is, but it's also, it kind of forces the athletes to, defi to divide the work. So how are they gonna do it? They're gonna go small sets, larger sets. So how, depending on how capable you are at, at, at the Toaster Bar, you're gonna be able to set yourself up for, for success by, by just splitting it up in a great way. And I think this is interesting, allowing the athletes to kind of shine this way. And that is Guillaume Briant out of France. He is in fifth overall, clinging to that final qualifying spot. We saw Andre Houdé set the time to beat. He was in seventh already, so applying a little pressure here to this final heat. Catullus is off the box and back to, sorry, off the rig now and back to the box. You can see he is all alone working through those 50 box jump overs. A couple of hands in the air. As you saw, Catullus joined by Jorgis Karabas in lane number seven at the front of your screen, just beyond him, Guillaume Briant, third place in this heat. And Catullus is fellow Greek all the way down in lane at number nine on the right side of your screen. And the lead for Catullus was 12 box jump overs before Guillaume and, uh, and, and George has made it onto the box. And an athlete we haven't really mentioned in this heat yet but that is starting to creep up over in lane four, it's Heinrich Hapalainen. 
kind of slow rolling this chipper and he's starting to chew up ground as we make our way back. And as we talked about, this is on the way back is when you want to make your move. And I think maybe he's just been taking it easy, kind of making sure he had enough lift in the tank to, to get after it. At the same time, it's, that's the interesting part. Has Alex gone out too hot? And Hapalainen holding on to one of those top five spots. You see Willie George on the right side of the screen. He was the last athlete to the toes to bar. But one of the first five back to the box, so he made a considerable ground during that toes to bar section. A little bit slower here on the box jump, but a nice push here from Willie, your overall leader. And there you go. Alex back on the handstand walk. He's just, he, I like, I love how fast he is. He blitzed those 50 <laughs> box jump overs. Wow. And has no intention of slowing down. And as I say that, he takes a breather. I should stop drinking people. I think it's fair to take a, a just a quick breather there. Because look how fast he is on his hands. Catullus chewing up real estate. Two lengths down, one length to go for Catullus, and he will be back to the deadlifts. You see the right side of your screen, Guillaume Briant establishing himself in second overall. And just behind him on the handstand walk, Jorgis Karavis. Those are your top three. And again, you're, you're seeing that kick with the feet. It just helps out with the rotation so you don't have to tax your shoulders more than you have to. Catullus is done with his 150-foot handstand walk. And he is back to the kettlebell deadlifts. As we close in on 10 minutes total, the top time from the previous heat is Andre Houdet. So he will have just under two minutes to go to get 50 kettlebell deadlifts and get to the finish mat. And that's not impossible at all. But as Cotton Potter, Porter said earlier, it depends on how much you want to close your eyes and go. You can see on the left side of your screen, Guillaume Briant closing in in second place. Finishes up his handstand walk, making his way to the kettlebells. Like you mentioned, Con Porter said, time to turn the brain off and just go. And Alex Catullus has done just that. He's unbroken. He's on his set. He's gone through two full sets of tens, and he's on, well, soon this will be the 30th rep without breaking. Now he breaks. Top time from Andre Houdet, 11.56. So we're closing on in on a minute to go for Catullus to try and snag himself 100 points in an event win to close this day number two. Just behind him in second, that's Guillaume Briant. They are the only two athletes on the kettlebells. As you can see, a few athletes making their way through the handstand walk. That's Jorgis Karabas now and Henrik Hapalainen. Hapalainen right to the kettlebells. You can see in the far left back of your screen, half a line and working on the kettlebell deadlifts, overtaking care of his for third. And Alex Katulis, yes. In with a time of 11.29.78. Coming into the event in 12th, and that is a huge event win for Katulis to hopefully move himself back into the top heat for the final day. And the second place in this heat, Guillaume Briant, making his way through the reps 30 to 40. But look at Heinrich Hapalainen. There we go. Hapalainen making a charge on these final set of deadlifts, closing in on Briant. That is his first break. So we passed the time of Andre Houdet as well. So, so Andre Houdet will hold on for second place in this event. And Guillaume Briant from France in with the time of 12.24, 68. That should be good for third overall. And line is in. He's in at 12.37, 64. Three, that should be good for fourth in this event. And now we're closing in on Christoph Horvath's time from the heat number one at 13.01. In top, top left of your screen, you can see Jan Nikoski, and he's going really, really fast. He wants to catch 
Caravis, Georgia's Caravis, but I think that's going to be a challenge. There's five reps left for Caravis. We're past Christoph Horvath's time of 13.01 from the first heat, so he'll lock up fifth. Caravis now fighting for those final few reps. And he is in. He crosses with a time of 13.19. And Antoine Domain in lane number 10 just snuck in there ahead of Caravis. He locks up a time of 13.15. And now we're seeing the rest of the top men sprint to the finish as Willie George is in. Ludwig Hansen is in. Tommaso Pieri, one of the last few athletes out on this field. He is just a few reps ahead of Elliot Simmons. Simmons fighting to do some damage control here. Pieri is in. That will close out his day number two. He crosses with the time of 14, 16, 63. And that'll do it for Elliot Simmons as he wraps up this third and final heat of men. But your winner in event number four, and he needed it, Alex Katulis. But let's just talk about what he just did. I mean, did, did, did we look, feast your eyes on this? He was the first one to get to the handstand walk, and he was faster than everybody else. He then extended his lead on the box jumps before he got to the toes to bars. He extended his lead even more on the toes to bars before he got back to the box. Then on the handstand walk, nobody could catch him. So when he got to the last deadlift, he was all alone. There was nothing but daylight ahead of him. And Katulis, you can see he was confident that this was going to be a wheelhouse workout for him. And your overall results in event number four. Andre Hude from Heat 2 holds on for the second fastest time. Christoph Horvath from the first heat, he's going to find himself maybe in the top heat into day number three. He gets a fifth place position. And then Reggie Fossa, who is on the bubble for the last chance, he gets another top performance in six. So a nice mixture of some of the top heat athletes and a few top times from before. And Willie George, nowhere to be seen in the top 10 of this. And Alex Katulis gets the event win. And he's down on the floor with Viva Mascara. Alex, first question. Um, how was your strategy in this event? Uh, the flow, I want to go with the flow. I am good in this exercise. And I wanted to do the same time uh, we did in the uh, training. Yes. And did it work? And? and did you do like the same time? Uh, no, I did better, better. Nice. <laughs> um, how has this past year been for you in training? Yes, I am a dad in this year. A difficult. And uh, I want to minimize the difference because I, I am in 12th place. And this program helped me a lot. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Biba. Congrats to Alex Petoulis as a new father this year. The men are done here on day number two at Strength and Depth. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, some light coverage as the women have their turn at event four. The 2022 CrossFit semifinals are presented by Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. By O2, the official recovery drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. And by the US Army, know your army.
One minute. Thirty seconds. Stand by. Stand Wolf in lane seven, Vanessa Barker.
These ladies have turned up on this competition floor this afternoon and they're ready to take no prisoners. Vanessa Wagner and Hannah Phipson looking very strong still as they come over the rocks. Also looking strong, Celia Tunison up here in lane nine. And Katarina Isla over in lane number three. First on to the toes to bar, Vanessa Wagner, closely followed by Hannah Phipson. Vanessa Wagner still looking strong. Matildas for now. Also looking strong. Here it seems that these ladies are looking to do short fast sets with small rests in the middle. Still chipping away at the toes tomorrow.
Vanessa Wagner. We are 10 minutes into the time cap. This workout is the time, and there is a 16 minute time cap. Vanessa Wagner working hard to get all of those reps in. Can we make it home? Pressure on it, stop! 
Don't you go anywhere, because we've got two more heats on.
Two heats remain here for the women in day number two with CrossFit Strength in depth. Welcome back inside the Excel London Convention Center. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson. And these are your overall standings through three events for the women. Emma McQuaid still holding to just a tiebreaker's margin over Jacqueline Dahlstrom. But down in fifth, Taylor Howe just five points ahead of Elisa Fuliano for that fifth and final spot. And then two women that we'll be seeing in this second heat, Aoife Burke and Marie Robin, inside the last chance qualifier spots. And we have event number four presented by Noble, Curiosity Shop. Well, it is. It is five kettlebell, or 50 kettlebell deadlifts, 150 foot handstand walk, 50 box jump overs, 75 toes to bar, followed by 50 box jump overs, 150 foot handstand walk, finish off with 50 kettlebell deadlifts. So the weight for the women is 20, 20 inches on the box, and it is two 32 kilo kettlebells. The time cap is 16 minutes. We've already seen the men go and one heat of women. Mads, your recipes for success delivered by Trifecta. They are still the same. Save some for the way back. That's when you want to make your move, if you want to make a move here and not just trying to survive. The other one is that the handstand walk is a trap. If you go too fast, you're going to get called back. We've seen a couple of athletes do that, and it's gotten them in trouble. You're laying assignments for heat number two of three for the women here. And as we just saw from those overall standings, a couple of women hoping to hold on to their spot inside the top 10 from this second heat, starting with Marie Robin. Well, she's currently sitting in eighth. She did a great job at the on, on the weightlifting event. Let's see how that how she does here. Heat two is underway, and as you mentioned, Matt, a slightly different test than the lifting event we saw earlier this morning. Marie Robin was second in that event, the 102 kilo lift. Then Aoife Burt, top five in that morning event. She comes into this event in seventh, so she is within striking distance for one of those top five spots. Well, she sure is, and she looked, I mean, she looked really, really good in the first event, and I think this is an event that's gonna su suit her really well. Also, she comes in, in, in with a bit of momentum. She should feel really good about in her being in the seventh position right now. So looking forward to seeing her. That's Evie Hollis in the middle of your screen right there. These women in heat number two making their way through 50 kettlebell deadlifts. Once they do, they'll make their way through the handstand walk and start to make their way through this chipper. We've seen a couple of athletes actually use that handstand walk to really kind of set themselves apart and get a bit of a margin and a buffer before we get to the box jump. Everybody's pretty much cycling the box jumps at the same time, more or less. It's within one or two reps. So if handstand walk is where you can really, you can make a move if you feel comfortable in the handstand walk. Lane three, Ella Wilkinson from High Performance CrossFit. She is your leader, first off of those kettlebells. Quickly upside down onto her hands. These athletes will have to do three different 50-foot sections. They will go down, back, and then down once more to get themselves to the box jumps. That's a fast turnaround right here from Ella Wilkinson. Shook her hands and just went, that's it, we're going again. Wilkinson didn't have the best finish in the lift event this morning, so maybe looking to take a chance here and land a few haymakers in this final event to close out day two. I think it's I think it's smart from her. I mean she didn't she didn't exactly do bad. I think considering her strength numbers, I think she got exactly what she could out of that lifting event. And use that momentum if she, if that made her feel good, which I hope hope it did, use that momentum in this event. And that's a good point. Sometimes performance is relative, right? Yeah. She had a goal, she hit that goal. Give you a little bit of a mental boost heading into what clearly looks to be at least a strength through this first half of the workout and the handstand walks and this chipper. And she's got good pace on the box as well. It's a pretty significant lead she got. And you can see she is well ahead of the rest of the field. Most of these athletes still yet to get through their third round of handstand walk. 
Ella Wilkinson is just digging into these box jumps. <laughs> She's doing that really well as well. I mean, she was fast on the walk, but I think what really got her ahead was that the turnaround. She didn't waste any time, just kicked right back up and went after it. And she is just now joined at the box. Lane seven, Emily Lundberg. And lane nine, Betty Graneron. As a few more athletes wrap up their handstand walk and make their way to the box. 50 box jump overs total here. And will make their way to what is basically the turnaround point in the 75 toast bar. And Alex Katula's thought about it. He's like, I just want to find my rhythm and just kind of stick with it. And I think you, if, if you look at these, these athletes, you're, you're going to see some that feels like they found their rhythm. And you find, find others who are just not feeling it. They're muscling their way through. And Ella Wilkinson is done and onto the toast bar. And it's interesting you mentioned that from Katulis. These box jump overs, not really something you're going to break into sets. Just kind of stay constant on and then I guess play by feel. And here is Aoife Burke, who came into this event, the top-ranked athlete in the heat, seventh overall. As you can see, her finishes throughout the weekend, kind of starting on a high note here on day number two with that fourth place finish in the lift. She is one of the last athletes to the box, so a little bit of ground to make up here. Well, both that and she, she's not cycling the box jump overs super fast. That being said, as I said to start with, save some for the way back. This may not be where you want to make your mark. And two athletes, as you can see on the rig there, on the center left of your screen, Ella Wilkinson, and all the way on the end, lane number nine, right side of your screen now, that is Medi Graneron. Second place in the heat. Fairly consistently through the men's heats, the leader after the toes to bar was pretty much able to hold on here. So an important point to maybe make a push here for both Wilkinson and Graneron. Interesting how, how you saw uh, Wilkinson just look down with, where's Medi at, where's Graneron at? Um, the question is if it's really that important. I mean, you have what you have and don't try to force it. And Marie Robin. Eighth place coming into this event. I mentioned earlier, she had a strong finish in the lifting event. Just one point back of Eva Burke. And hoping to continue that momentum into this event. And it should be noted that no athlete in the previous heat was able to finish. In fact, no woman was able to even get into the final 10 reps of the kettlebell deadlift. So just by getting to that section, you will have the time to be going into the finale. Ella Wilkinson, keeping a nice straight leg technique with those toes to bar. You'll see some athletes break at the knees, use a little flick. Steady as she goes, nice and long through the legs. And I think that's that's really down to what kind of athlete you are and how you levers how you levers are how, how are you kind of put together what parts were you built from whether whether you want to do one or the other bending the legs kicking up is going to cost you more energy but it's a lot faster. One, once again, if you have a, a kip like the one that you see Yellow Wilkins are using right now, that taxes the grip a lot because it's just a lot of momentum in that grip. So whatever kind of suits you. We've seen some beautiful kips here particularly from Ella Wilkinson, you see her get nice and open on the front end of that arch hollow, showcasing some shoulder mobility, really getting to kind of whip those legs around with her kip. And she is your overall leader now as we cross the seven minute mark here in heat number two for event four. Betty Graneron on the right side of your screen there with the purple top, she is in second place. Hoping to finish her day number two on a high note. To her left, hidden right there behind the judge. That is Marie Robin with the green pants. And that looks, Marie Robin looks a little bit more taxed on these toes to bars. It's just, she's not getting naturally all the way to the bar, so she really has to kind of force the last part. And as I say that, Ella Wilkinson makes it onto the box jump overs. Looking Wilkinson. very relaxed. And Wilkinson now looks like she is in cruise control here on the box. 
she already had a sizable lead heading into the toes to bar and looks like she is continuing to build. Considering how fast she was on the handstand walk, I can't imagine her giving this heat away to anybody else now. And you can see behind her the rest of the heat still on the rig. And then Wilkinson all alone chewing into this second set of 50 box jump overs. And yeah, no other judges even have their hands in the air yet. Just a nice, steady cadence. Step down, as soon as that second foot hits the ground, she is back up onto the box. So now Midi, Midi in lane, I think it's lane number nine, isn't it? Yes. Midi Granero's judge's hand is in the air, indicating that she's on the last reps. Emily Lundberg in lane number seven, her judge's hand is in the air as well, but Emily Wilkins, or uh, Ella Wilkinson right here, <laughs> she is definitely in cruise control. And in lane number seven, you can see now making her way to the first couple reps on the box, that's Emily Lundberg. Made up a ton of ground on the those toes to bar, she was toward the middle of the pack, getting to the rig, and Ella Wilkinson has a, a minute plus lead now on the rest of the field, and she is done. And here we go, she's onto that handstand walk. This is gonna be interesting to see. She was very fast on the last ones, didn't spend any time wasted on resting on the turnaround, and I think she's gonna do the same thing again. And on the handstand walk is really where Wilkinson started to separate. She was almost a full length ahead of the rest of the field. And really just enough time to turn around and reset herself before she is back on her hands. She is not going away, that's for sure. And you know, with one of these long kind of drawn out chippers where you cover the, uh, the full length of the floor, when you're in the lead like Wilkinson is, you have the advantage of getting Getting able to scan the floor and see where the rest of your competition is. You just love to see an athlete who's so aware of where their strong suit is and then really making a move and getting after it right there. And Wilkinson, one of the younger athletes in the field, 22 years young, out of high performance CrossFit. This would be a nice finish for her. She came in as one of the lower ranked athletes out of the quarterfinals. But sometimes all you need is a, a ticket into the event and once it's live competition, all bets are off. Remember that Ella was also one of the first athletes, to, if not the first athlete, to kick athlete after the deadlift. So she's very aware of what she's kind of getting herself into now. She is already to the second set of dumbbells, and she is just now joined by Emily Lundberg as the second athlete off of the box jumps. She is miles ahead of the remaining field. Sorry, we're, I forgot we're overseas now. I should say kilometers. <laughs> So Emily Lundberg, it's, it's, it's important to remember that she needs to go up and down again. And same thing with Midi, with, uh, Midi Grineron. She needs to get all the way back to the boxes and then back again for the handstand walk. Ella Wilkinson just got a lot of time. And Ella Wilkinson came into this event ranked at 23rd overall. So she would actually, if that position holds, drop out of this second heat. So. She needs this performance to try and at least keep herself in this second heat going into the final day. Now we're seeing more women from the second heat on the handstand walk portion. But still, Ella Wilkinson all by herself. 10 reps to go. Already, she has the top time or the top score locked up. Everyone from the previous heat was time capped. So not only will she set the top time so far, she will be the first woman to finish this event. And Ella Wilkinson <laughs> finishing strong here to close day number two.
12.45. As she puts together the top time unofficially just around the 12.45 mark. 12.45.51 to be exact for Ella Wilkinson. And now, with just under three minutes to the cap, it's looking like we might have a few women join her at the finish mat. Well, we've got a race on our hands between Emily Lundbury and, Mer and, uh, and Mary Generon in, in lane number seven and lane number nine. Lundberg was in second after the handstand walk, but Grenaron starting to close the gap a little bit over in lane number nine. This is where Con Porter said, just close your eyes and go. We spoke to Con before the event, and he said those last 20 to 30 deadlifts, you can't think, you just got to turn the brain off and go. And it's Grenaron, purple top at the front of your screen, going toe to toe with Emily Lundberg for these final 10 reps. And very different techniques here. So Mehdi, yeah, closest to your, uh, closest to you in the screen right now with the purple T-shirt, bending her legs a lot more. Whereas Emily Lundberg's just, that's just hip. Shoots her hip back and then stands back up. So lower back as opposed to thighs. Yeah, almost doing a little bit of a stiff-legged deadlift there, kind of keeping the chin tucked. Not really worried about anyone left or right. Ten reps remain for Emily Lundberg. Hand is in the air for Betty Grenaron. Three reps to go. And Betty Grenaron is going to lock up second place in the event. Luper is just behind. Grenaron in with a time of 14.43, 14.45 for Emily Lundberg. Just over a minute go to go to the cap for this heat number two. Sylvia Izquierdo in lane number six. Looks like she is on to her final set of ten. And in lane four, Ethan Burke, one of these athletes, hoping to close in on the cut line. She's towards the middle of the pack here. She's going to struggle to finish this up. She's got another 30 seconds to go. Final few reps for Izquierda. And she is in. That will be good for fourth in the heat and the event through two heats so far. And here's Marie Robin. 10 seconds to go. Hold on. Oh, you can see the fatigue through the midline there as she is fighting for every single rep. Oh, and that's going to do it for heat number two here as we cross the 16-minute time cap. You're going to have to tally up to see how many reps are left, but there was your leader basically the entire way, and your heat winner for number two in Ella Wilkinson. From the outset, Mads, it was basically Wilkinson the entire way. Once she got to the first handstand walk, it was all about her. Fast turnarounds on the handstand walks. And once she got to the box jumps, just great technique. Increased her, her lead there. Toast to bar, held on to it. Not a lot of difference as she got back to the box there. But that's when she made her move even, even, it made it, made it even better because on the, the next handstand walk, nobody was even close to her. And she went really, really fast. Just time enough for a turnaround. Got back <laughs> onto the deadlift. There was nobody, nobody behind her. So yep. Smooth sailing for Ella Wilkinson as she sets the top time by nearly two minutes. 12.45. That's crazy. And that's going to be a tall time to to tackle for this final heat. Two heats of women are done. When we return, the top women will tackle event number four.
lovely evening here in London. As action continues from day number two at Strength and Depth. And a sold out crowd here on Saturday. Tommy Marquez alongside Mads Jacobson. We have a mass daughter, our third member, will join us in just a moment. Your overall standings through three events and Emma McQuaid and Jacqueline Dahlstrom holding strong atop the leaderboard in a tie for points. But Taylor Hall is holding on to that fifth and final spot. Just five points ahead of Elise Juliano in sixth. And event four to close out day two for the women, presented by Noble. The old Cur Curiosity Shop, Mads. Well, the Curiosity Shop today consists of 50 kettlebell deadlifts, 150 50-foot handstand walk, 50 box jump overs, 75 toes to bar, 50 box jump overs again, then another 150 foot handstand walk, and we finish up with 50 kettlebell deadlifts. 16 minute time cap. We've seen two heats so far. Your recipes for success presented by Trifecta. Yep, well they are. Save some for the way back because that's when you really want to throw it everything you have in the kitchen sink at this event. And the handstand walk can be a trap if you go too fast, get caught, and get called back, which we've seen a couple of athletes do. You're going to have a lot of catching up to do. Your lane assignments for this top woman's heat to close out the day of competition. Some big names in the field hoping to make a push, including a newcomer into the top five, Taylor Howe. Well, exactly, and this is where she needs to where she needs to prove that she belongs there and defend that position. I mean, we've had a couple of other other athletes do really, really well, and someone who definitely needs a strong performance here, Catcher David's daughter, outside looking in through three events. She's been in this position before, and I think this is an event that fits her really well. The final heat of women is underway. They will sprint down to the end and turn around and kick up on their hands for the first, sorry, excuse me, they will grab the kettlebells first. Got a little ahead of myself. 50 kettlebell deadlifts here, followed by a 150 foot handstand walk. And Mads, one of the things that has been consistent across Katrin's career is that when she needs to, she can really dial up an event I mean, she, she really can, and it's not not just that. At this event, she did this event, or an event like this, at the CrossFit Games. And the one thing that kind of got her uh, to, to win that event was her ability to hold on to the to the heavy kettlebells. It was pedal to the metal, and I think that's what we're seeing right now. She's gotten unbroken so far, and has gotten her in the lead. And handstand walks have not been a problem for her in the past either. So, really, right. I think the event suits her well, and I think you know, she, as you said, she needs to pull something out of the hat. Catcher kind of riding the line here with these deadlifts and maybe taking a chance a little bit here, pushing the pace. She's one of the best in the world on her hands. And, and at this point, she really is going to need 100 points if she wants to keep her hopes alive. And she is so aware of that as well. And for Catcher David's daughter, 50 reps unbroken, giving you shades of 2015 when she won her first title. She was able to hold on to those heavy kettlebell deadlifts and pedal of the metal too. And as you said, she is one of the best at handstand walking in the world. And she is done with her first 50 foot section and she is already turned around. And just now the rest of the field making their way on the handstand walk. As you can see some ships in the night passing each other on these handstand walks is Catherine David's daughter has already opened up herself a lead. And she needs this. She needs this performance. She really, really does. And see Catherine's performances across the weekend thus far. Started strong, but struggled a little bit in that event too, mainly on the rings and those ring muscle-ups. And then, relatively speaking, 11th in a strength event. Not terrible for her, but you know, really needs a strong performance here. Exactly, and I think had she had she gotten had she not struggled on the muscle ups, she would have been happy with where she would have been at. But right now, I'm imagining she isn't quite happy. Um, but she's doing everything, all the right things right now, though. And you can see Catcher David's daughter all alone on the box drops, a row of empty boxes behind her, and it looks like. Three Helga daughter and lane number four might be the first woman to join her on the box jump overs. 
two Icelandic daughters are first in the box. There is Thuri. Holding a good clip here on these early box jumps. That's Elisa Fuliano who's joined them on the box jumps as well, right? And Emma McQuaid behind her all the way in lane number five. She's on the box as well. David's daughter, lane number one, she's in first. Thuri Helga daughter, lane four, in second. And then it's Juliano in lane two, McQuaid in lane five. They are battling it out for third in this heat. And there's your gatekeeper for the top five, Taylor Howe in fifth overall. Back-to-back -back fourth place finishes. And this her into fifth. Yeah, and this looks a, lot, looks a lot better than what we've seen her do on events like this before. She's always been a really powerful athlete, but now she's she's actually expending no more energy than she needs to get over the box. Because remember, there's another 50 of these on the other side coming back. And it looked like she was maybe conserving some energy in the earlier event with that heavy barbell. Katja Davis' daughter now first to the rig for a sizable chunk of 75 toes to bar. So I want to see how many reps she gets before third or makes it onto the uh, makes it onto the rig because Thury is no stranger to big sets of tools to bar. And Thury is now joining Katrin on the rig. Katrin doing sets of five there. And yep. She was peeking to her left to see where Thury was. So yeah. It's interesting to see her do sets of five. Obviously, she's uh, worked out a strategy with Yami taking in. And Katrin Davis' daughter will have 28 points to make on how She's hoping to jump into the top five. Only needs one point to make up on Marie Robin to get into the last chance qualifier position. And it looks like Davis' daughter's doing sets of five with a, a specific rest there, because she's not resting much. No. Nope. Here's the engine on her way to the toaster bars. Very different technique, kind of scooping technique, but very, very, very Samantha Briggs. She's always used this technique. She's going to need a, a bounce back event here because 27 in that lifting event. That was actually dead last because there's only 27 women in the field. She opted to only get one lift and then bypassed everything. Yeah. Seemingly saving energy for later on in the event. And that being said, I mean, I don't think it's one of these events where she's going to be able to make up a lot of ground. And she's not the fastest handstand walker, Samantha Briggs, so it's going to be hard. Plus, we've got a couple of really hungry athletes out here trying to make a move. I mean, everybody's pushing it, so there's nowhere to hide. Right now, your overall leaders in this event, Katrin Davis' daughter on the left side of your screen, and then three lanes over, lane number four, Thuri Helga daughter, second to the rig, but looking like she could push Katrin for the lead here with slightly larger sets on the toes to bar. I think she may have actually, if she, I, I think she may, have, she may have caught up. Your overall leaders here, actually in a tie for points, but Emma McQuaid gets the nod via tiebreaker, but point for point with her is Jacqueline Dahlstrom there in the center of your screen. You see just to the right of Jacqueline, Sam Briggs making her way through the toes of arc. There's one saving grace for Briggs, is that she has the gas tank to maybe speed up a little bit on the backside of this. And she's got the grip, the, the grip and the, the willpower to go. I'm not letting these things go on the deadlifts. Time to beat from a previous heat. Ella Wilkinson, a blazing fast time of 12:45. That will be put to the test here with last, this top woman. Last heat. five for four for Katrin Tanya, and last five for Thuri as well. So Thuri's actually overtaken Katrin Tanya. Thuri Helga daughter first to the box here on the back half of this chipper. She's putting the pressure on Katrin David's daughter coming off those toes to bar. 
Catcher needs every point that she can muster. So in a little bit of a race here between two of Iceland's finest. <laughs> I mean, there is no slowing down for these women. And Sam Briggs making a push. Third to the box now, just ahead of Jacqueline Dahlstrom in fourth. This brings sh shades of the Atlantic Regional back in the day when Sam Briggs with a broken foot knocked out 100 box jump overs and managed to qualify. I mean, I'm looking forward to the day when somebody sits down and writes the book of Samantha Briggs' career. This is going to be a, this is going to be an epic battle. They should make a movie about it, actually. Now that I think about it, maybe call it the big engine that could. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know somebody who does movies like that? I think you do, right? I know a couple. I know maybe you. in the space. <laughs> yeah. A couple of uh, buttery bros. And if Sam is able to qualify, here is what she's chasing: some elite company of women who are able to qualify for the games past the age of 40. But it doesn't have hasn't happened in a while. We didn't include 2019 because different qualification standards, but Cheryl Bross, the last to do it back in 2012. And we've got Thuri on her hands now. And we said that Thuri wasn't a stranger to walking fast on her hands. She's walking just as fast as Katrin Tanya did in the first, in the first round of handstand walks. Got a pretty commanding lead here for Thuri as well. David's daughter joining her on the handstand walk seems to be a consistent theme for these Icelandic women is familiar, familiarity upside down in the handstand walk. Seems like maybe gymnastics is a common sport for them growing up. Well, I, th I think it is. I think it's both that and I think it's also that you have a very healthy and very mature CrossFit community. So everybody who wants to compete are very aware that this is something they need to control. And now Sam Briggs, Jacqueline Dahlstrom. Briggs on your left, Dahlstrom on the right, white pants in a race for the third place in this heat. And that's Thuri Helgedotter, a full two sections ahead of Dahlstrom behind her, and she will be the first to make her way back to the deadlifts. She's gonna have about two minutes to go to beat the top time overall. You can see Thuri's finishes throughout the weekend thus far. There's Katrin David's daughter. She's done. Remember, Katrin went unbroken yep. through the first set of kettlebell deadlifts. So three, taking a break after 10. Maybe the door is open for Katrin to make this a race. If she can go unbroken, she can do this. Katrin really riding the line there with those deadlifts. Just off of the screen here. There's a head judge making sure she stands those up all the way. Katrin has yet to put down the kettlebells, though. Just as and you better the, the the announcer jinx there. Yep. But Thuri Helgadotter still holding on to the lead here. Final few sets of these kettlebell deadlifts. And so the time to beat is 12.45. That's a minute away from now. And Thuri is already, already on his second to last set. As we cross the 12 Come minute mark Thuri. here, Thuri Helgadotter is on her final set of 10 kettlebell deadlifts. As she looks to hold off Katrin David's daughter. And it's so hand impressive. in the air for Thuri Helgadotter. She is done. And she will lock up an event win here in event number four. And Katja David's daughter is racing against the top time from Ella Wilkinson now. 12.45 is that time from the previous heat. And there's that time by Ella Wilkinson. So Katzen Tanya now fighting for the third position, the third fastest heat in this event. And she won't get a win, but as she wraps up this event here, Katrin David's daughter should be able to lock up 
third place overall at 92 points in the event. And a nice little bounce back from Patrick David's daughter to close out day two. This is exactly what she needed. So look at Jacqueline Dahlström right here, right side of your screen. And this is the race for your overall lead because Jacqueline Dahlström and Emma McQuaid were tied in points. And Dahlstrom is across. She will get fourth in the event, and she will be your overall leader heading into the final day. Just behind her, hoping to lock up fifth. That is Emma McQuaid. And even though she relinquishes the overall lead, she will hold on to second, just four points back of Dahlstrom going into Sunday. That's Elisa Puliano in lane number two. She was right on the bubble with Taylor Howe. And host Howe still well behind in this heat. So for Puliano, this could move her up into the top five overall heading into Sunday. Puliano is in with the time. 14-14 and Briggs is in now. She's across at 14-24. That should be good for seventh in the event. It's Amy Kringle finishing up right there as well. So Amy Kringle across. A few athletes that Briggs is chasing. Taylor Howe, Nicole here. Soul Sigmund daughter still out there on the competition floor. She is at the back of this heat and this was gonna be an event that she was gonna have to do some damage control right now, but hoping she can chew up some reps here, maybe get underneath the time cap as we are just over 30 seconds to go. Time cap of 16 minutes. And that is Nicole here on the left center of your screen. Couple reps to go. We're gonna see how everything, how everything pans out in the end with the scoreboard, but this is not what Taylor Howe needed. Here is and she is in just under the time cap, 1554. And speaking of what you didn't need, I don't think Sola needed this either. Somebody who did need this is Thuri Helgadotir, and she did, did a great job at taking this event. Thuri came into the event in fourth overall, and she is going to be your winner in event number four. And early on, it was a race between her and then a fellow countrywoman, Katrin David's daughter. Katrin David's daughter went on broken on the first deadlift, so she was the fastest on the handstand walk. And we all thought, well, she's going to be able to hold on to that. Once they got to the toes to bar, however, Thuri was able to catch up with her and pass her by. So she got to the box before Katrin Tanya. Also made it onto the handstand walk before Katrin Tanya and accelerated, actually went faster than Katrin. So once they got to the, to the deadlift, she hung on for dear life as Katrin Tanya started breathing down her neck, but Thuri got it. Thuri put on an amazing display on that back half of that chipper and your overall resorts for event number four. Helga Dotter with your top time. Ella Wilkinson from heat number two. Holds on for a second place finish. And Jacqueline Dahlstrom gonna break the tie with Emma McQuaid for the overall spot. But it's Thuri Helga daughter closest day two with an event win, and she is standing by with Viva Mass daughter. Thuri Erla Helga daughter Thuri, congratulations! Thank you so much. Uh, you told me before that you were kind of excited for the toaster bars. Is that true? Yes, I was most excited for the handstand walk and the toaster bar. One one of my favorite moments. How was it like hanging on to the kettlebells like at the very end of the event? Mm, it was super hard. <laughs> just closing your eyes and just keep kept going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just tried to go as hard as I could. Um, last day is tomorrow. What are you bringing into the final day of competition? My everything. <laughs> your everything? Yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Especially the likeless rollers. 
All right. Good luck on that. And congratulations again. Thank you so much. Love how she throws the gauntlet. Hey, I'm looking forward to the legless rope climbs. I think she's going to do very well in that event, definitely. She didn't, she didn't get to do that event that year because she was on a team. Yep. The one year she went team. For all standings and information to stay up to date, be sure to head on over to games.crossfit.com. Sold out crowd here at Strength and Depth. Snapping a few picks with their favorite athletes as they empty the stands. You're going to want to save that photo for Instagram. <laughs> Catching David's daughter. Back against the wall here a little bit in that final event. Comes out swinging and holds on for a strong performance. Well, she did. I mean, she didn't get the win that she was maybe looking for, but it is still a strong performance, and it sets her up really nicely for tomorrow as well. Both on the scoreboard, on the leaderboard, we're going to have to see how everything pans out. But I think more mentally than anything, you want to finish off on a high, and this has got to be a high. One day of competition remains. Two events in store on the final day. And here's how it will play out. The teams will lead things off followed by the women, then the men in event, in event five, and we will reset and reseed for the final event as we get ready to hand out another batch of game tickets here at Strength and Depth. These are your standings unofficially after four events. And Andre Hude moves up into the top five, overtaking Ludwig Hansen. Willie George is still your leader, solidly in first. And then Jonakowski clean to that final last chance qualifier spot, just five points ahead of Alex Katulis. Well, I think it's I think it's still it's still a tight race, so the the, the the straight qualifiers and the last or the last chance qualifiers is still a tight battle. I mean, there's still some moving that can be done tomorrow, so nobody should go home and just go, yeah, and I'm good to go, pop a beer and take it easy. A lot up for grabs in Sunday as we head into the final day of competition here in London at the CrossFit Strength and Depth. Saw some heavy barbells, a packed out crowd, some excitement, even a few inflatable bananas. What more could you ask for? <laughs> We're gonna close things out here for day number two. Thanks for joining us. For Mads Jacobson, Bibba Mastodder, I'm Tommy Marquez. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the final day here at Strength and Depth.